Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Survivor Winners at War update. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and this week I have a great guest for you. Uh, one of the greatest Big Brother winners of all time. It's Derek Lavasser. How you doing, Derek? I'm good, man. I'm actually tweeting out your link right now. I'm excited to talk Survivor. You know, these podcasts are always fun, but it's particularly fun when you've been homeschooling children all day. And you can't leave your house. And I get, now I'm really excited about this. You might, have, you, might, you might have trouble getting me off of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I feel like there's there's not a lot to do here uh, right now when we have no. uh, we've got all, all of the quarantine stuff happening, the social yeah. distancing. We're not we're not distancing. Uh, we're physically distant, but uh, we're still social here on uh, on the podcasts. Yeah, I, I'm not being insensitive here. That you know, this whole thing is very serious, but. This is good for business for you. That's all I'll say. It's well, not... As long as the shows stay on air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, good point. Great yeah. point, actually. Well, Survivor, you don't have to worry about. This mm -hmm. is going to be around. But as far as Big Brother, things like that, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, well, we are here to talk mm -hmm. about this week's episode. It was uh, an interesting episode here. Uh, mm -hmm. A double double elimination. And yes. uh, we, we saw... Uh, I mean, I think I think the headline the headline from this episode is that uh, the the queen is dead. Long live the queen. Yeah, and in a in a unbelievable fashion. Uh, I'm, I haven't seen every season, so all the big Survivor fans out there, I'm considered to be a newbie more than likely when it comes mm -hmm. to how many seasons I've watched. But that strategy, that gameplay by Denise, from what we saw, uh, I thought was incredible. I thought it was incredible. What a great move from all the way. Down. I'm sure we'll get into the details of it. Um, but just from the, using only one fire token as a, she had a plan. Yeah. It was incredible. It was incredible. Um, all right, let's get into the episode. Let's dive into some of these, uh, the details of the episode here. Let's do it. Um, there were a couple things I caught on a, on a rewatch as I, as I got these notes down. Mm -hmm. Um, so we started the episode on the Sele tribe and we heard that, uh, no more Boston Rob rules. That uh, they can do whatever they want now. Um, and Ben is very pleased. He says uh, about Boston Rob, don't treat me like I'm some rookie. It was it was a lack of respect. I'm out here having fun, building relationships. Uh, I want to show people that I can change my game. That's my goal. And uh, I've, I've grown close, closer to Sarah and, uh, and even Sophie. That she's a good person. And I want to align myself with good people. Um, and I have to say, like right off the bat, this feels like a really good moment for Ben on the show, who started the game very rocky. He has that scene with Boston Rob, where Boston Rob really makes him look like a fool. Um, mm -hmm. And now he has this scene where he has overcome Boston Rob. He said, don't treat me like a rookie. I'm better than that. I can change my game. And uh, and, and it really feels like uh, it feels like this this has come full circle here for Ben in this moment. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a saying uh, that came on way before I ever was on reality TV, but I remembered it when I was on a reality show, which is it's not always about what you say. It's how you make people feel. And as a grown man who was in the military, to have another grown man make you feel like a child when he has, I believe he has children of his own. Ben does. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something you forget. And it goes above and beyond the game. Um, and this was a moment for him where I think he felt like he may regret how he was being portrayed or how he was looking on the show, the way Bob, uh, Rob was talking to people and uh, whether he won or lose the game uh, down the road, he wanted to make sure that the guy who made him feel this way didn't win. So for him, it almost feels like he won the game already because it was a, it was an ego thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and for somebody that, that has a lot to prove this season, um, it does. It feels like he yeah. is still trying to uh, to prove like, hey, I, I'm here and I'm here to play. And it does seem as though he is the person who came out on the better end of this deal of yeah. getting rid of Boston Rob over Adam, because we we go straight over to Adam, who is telling us that uh he is a little concerned, and the the vibe of this confessional from Adam very different from the one with Ben, which had like the soaring music. We get to Adam, and the music goes dark, and mm -hmm. he says that uh, yes, you know, now that Boston Rob is gone, it's like everyone's celebrating, but I'm kind of worried because. Ben has great relationships with Sophie and with Sarah, and I'm kind of concerned. I'm actually more 
cornered now in this tribe than I was before Boston Rob went home. Um, and it really looks like for the second time in a row, uh, Adam is the next person to go off of this tribe because mm. we saw from <clears throat> the, the old Sele tribe that it looked like he was the next person to go had they not swapped. He is now in a situation where he is again in danger and we're going to see him really, uh, really fighting hard to win immunity to prevent that from happening. Yeah. Yeah, no, Adam. Adam's had a rough go of it for sure. And uh, you know, when when the three other people are you know playing and laughing and joking, and then like he said in the episode, you know, Ben says three words to me when we're alone. Uh, it doesn't take a former winner to realize that's not a good sign for things to come. Um, but again, it's Survivor. Anything can happen. We don't know if they're gonna drop buffs next week and change up uh, tribes. To be honest with you, uh, you know, from a production standpoint, I wouldn't be surprised if with how many big players they've lost so quickly. Um, there isn't a random uh, tribal swap very soon because they've lost some, some great players. And I think they want to try to mix it up again and kind of create some new alliances. But yeah, Adam right now in this moment, he, he sees the writing on the wall and realizes uh, he's in a tough spot. Yeah. Um, we've got a little uh, video video freeze going on, but that's all right. Um, yeah. So I, I was surprised because it did seem as though we were going to uh, to have a merge soon. But in the preview, uh, they didn't they did not show any kind of uh, merge preview. They usually tell us ahead of time. Um, so I, w I was surprised that uh, that we're not getting a merge in the next episode. Uh, and, and I guess we're going to see one more tribal with these three tribes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's kind of developing into a nice situation for a couple tribes and not so much for for the one like Adam particularly their tribe, but um, again, I think one more episode and then we're gonna see a tribal swap. Yeah, we're see a merge or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so we head over to uh to extinction and uh, Tyson is going to uh, head over to the camp with a big log. It's a clue log, um, and they're all they're all concerned because uh, they're like, "Oh my god, are we gonna have to carry more logs?" Um, but no, <laughs> yeah. it's just uh, it's just a clue to a, uh, a, a an advantage that is going to be sold to one of the players in the game. Um, Tyson tells us that he does not have any fire tokens, unlike most of the people here who all have fire tokens, and so he wants to get a fire token. He I, I noted he said here he doesn't want Rob to find it. I don't know why Rob in particular. He wanted to keep uh, away from this thing. Maybe he sees Rob as his biggest biggest competition to get back into the game. Uh, maybe he's just just being Tyson. Um, yeah. But uh, he says he really didn't want Rob to find it. Yeah, I mean it's kind of been the theme all season, right? Like Rob's led his status, right? His leg his 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 what's the word I'm looking for? His persona, his the prestige of his name, Boston Rob, has kind of been a curse for him mm -hmm. this season. And uh, regardless of what he's actually, I mean, he's done okay in the game from what I saw up to that point, but he's lost some challenges. He's, you know, he's had some mistakes in there, obviously, and yet still everyone's very scared of him, you know, and that's just because of the, the resume he's built over the last couple of times that he's played the game. Um, and I think that's carried over to Edge of Extinction and, and you have Tyson, you know, looking at all these strong players, but for some reason he's fixated on Rob, you know. Like I said, his name, Boston Rob, carries a lot of weight in the Survivor community, so I can understand where it comes from. But I guess if you were basing it just on this season's gameplay, I mean, Rob has been playing from behind almost the entire time. Um, yeah. what, what, is, what, has, what has been your read on Boston Rob playing this season? So how, how, many of, how many of his previous seasons have you seen? I haven't seen any of them. This is my first one. So you're fresh and, on Boston Rob. Yeah, and so that's why... You know, coming on this tonight, I wanted to be careful because I know he has a huge following. I don't mm -hmm. really care about the troll, you know, anybody, you know, I don't care about that, but I want to be respectful to what he's done in the past. I was not impressed with what I saw this season, but that absolutely means nothing because I didn't see a lot. Um, but his kind of, to you know, authoritative, like control over people, this all goes back to like what I've been saying about Big, Big Brother and Survivor for years. You know, these players played the game when it was still evolving and it's evolving every year. And the strategies that worked when you played the first time or the second time are not going to probably work in the future because people have watched it. And so I think the status of what people have done in past seasons is probably 
more heavily weighted than it should be because these new players, although you might not be as impressed with their wins, their information, their toolbox is a lot more extensive. Even Boston Rob said it at some point as far as the immunity idols and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're behind the eight ball. So you can't think that just because Boston Rob was incredible on his last season or whatever it was that he's going to be able to compete with these new guys, even if you weren't as impressed with their their seasons that they won. And I think we're seeing that. Like the tricks that Boston Rob pulled in previous seasons, the buddy system and stuff like that, they, he tried to do something similar to that, maybe a little bit of like a, a play on it. And they're like, yeah, no, not happening. Sorry, sorry, Boston Rob. We've seen it before. You're still going, you know? And, and that approach to even try to implement it, to keep them all at the – you know, at the fire pit all day, it actually seems like it backfired. So yeah. again, it's the constant evolution of the game. I wasn't that impressed with his season this season this year, but that doesn't mean he isn't the best player ever or what most people think in the community. But again, just from looking at this in a vacuum, uh, you know, it seemed like he struggled the whole time. And, uh, you know, I know we, if you have someone who comes into a game and tries to like not bully people, but control everyone and kind of be the parent of everyone. I know as a grown man myself, that's not going to play well. So, you know, I guess on different casts it would work, but with this cast that's kind of got a lot of experience in the game, they were like, yeah, sorry, buddy. That's, you're not, you're not going to, you're not the chess master here. We're all going to play our own game. Yeah, I, I think you, you raise an interesting point, too, about uh, underestimating from the audience standpoint, the newer players um, who maybe don't have as big a legacy as these classic, you know, legend winners, um, but having played on more recent seasons, having the knowledge of all the previous seasons. Um, you know, Rob uh, Sesternino has certainly talked about the evolution of strategy in Survivor. Um, and I, I've really been thinking a lot about the evolution of strategy in Big Brother too. Um, yeah. And how, you know, over the course of 20 or so seasons, um, we have seen the game evolve and like the dominant strategy of the game evolve, like Secret Alliances, the, the very start of it, way back in season three and yeah. then that sort of evolves to you know secret alliances onion onion layer uh, alliances yeah. secret yeah. onion layer alliances <laughs> um and you kind of i feel like ha have had in big brother 16 uh really had the ultimate form of evolving what came before and perfecting it into the like big onion secret alliance that yeah. spreads out and has multiple things well, well, well what's one of the most notorious things with big brother it's the diary room sessions between dr will and mm -hmm. and boogie right that's like the most infamous thing that's the meme you see everywhere it's like no and them doing the phone call diary room sessions are legendary right guess what if i had ever saw anyone go into the diary room together and it wasn't for a twist or a competition they're gone. Mm -hmm. They're gone. So you were never going to get those moments in Big Brother again because it was done. It was done perfectly. And now it's ruined for everyone going for this, so further. So to your point, the evolution that worked one season, it'll never work again. And the same thing goes for Survivor, where you have these strategies that were implemented for the first time. They worked flawlessly. And now... You know, they might be a one trick pony type thing. You can't use them again. You got to you got to evolve. You got to adapt. And it seems like Rob really went in there trying to play maybe a similar game to what he's played in the past. Again, I haven't seen past seasons, but to what the other tribe members alluded to, he had implemented a buddy system before. Mm -hmm. This was kind of an ad adaptation of that. And they com immediately called it out yeah. and said, no, it's not going to happen. So worked once. You got you to gotta evolve and you can't just rely on what you've done in the past, especially when the season before, like they pointed out, you had a freaking statue of you built on the island. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of a bigger target than that. You got a freaking statue of you built on the island. And yeah. they're all, and they're all, and I'll tell you something I heard that's not on the show, but I heard that when they were coming off the, the, the boats to the island, a few, you could see the statues yeah. from, from, you know, where they were coming on the, the, the shore to start the game. It's not a great place to start the game if, no. <laughs> if you're Boston Rob. No, no. For, for Sandra and, Bo uh, and Boston Rob mm -hmm. to look over and everyone that's going to play against you is seeing two <laughs> basically national monuments of you on the on the island. Yeah, you're in trouble. You're you're in trouble. <laughs> you got problems. Yeah, and we, we we talk all the time, especially on Big Brother, but certainly on Survivor. Um, it's a little bit less relevant on Survivor, but about uh, like super fans of the game 
generally having an advantage over recruits. And if we look yeah. at Big Brother in particular, um, where there tend to be more recruits than Survivor, um, the last, like, since before you won, so the, mm -hmm. for like, you know, the last, what, seven years, eight years, probably more, um, I think it's for the last decade, like, basically every single winner of the show has been a pretty big fan of the show um yeah. that uh yeah. there's a significant advantage you the the fans of the show generally run circles around the players that are really good and even when you do get a recruit that's really good at the game they often fall just short of winning because they don't have the knowledge that has been accumulated over the course of so many seasons uh to uh, to to do to to overcome the person who does have that knowledge and so when we have winners who won uh, you know 10 years ago um maybe don't keep up with the show quite as much as some of the newer winners who were big fans and watched all their lives and then went on survivor and won um they're probably a little more up to date on the current state of survivor all of the different and the you know this has made a big deal of all the different advantages and all of that stuff but i think even more than that it's it's also just like the way that survivor has evolved as as the strategy has evolved um because it it does seem like a simple game, but there are different elements to it that do get more and more advanced as time goes on. Yeah, and, and Survivor has changed up the game tremendously since 10 years ago to keep it fresh. And again, not to be a broken record, but Rob said it himself, you know, immunity idols and what to look for, you know, that's a completely different element than he's you accustomed to. You know, I think he said he found one before, but in the, in the, the most recent years, you have someone like Ben who's probably not feared by many on that island, and yet he's the idle guy. He knows exactly what to look for. He's helping them search. So it's, a, it's again, when you it's almost like a sport. You know, when you haven't played for a while, some of those skills can become a little rusty. And I think, you know, that may be the case for some of the players, although Sandra played pretty recently, right? I mean, she... Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into that whole yeah, play. She I, just thought, game changers. Yeah, uh, I mean we'll get into that but that was just a great move on on that one i don't think that was mm. sandra's fault well we'll talk about that yeah um, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm cool <laughs> but yeah but yeah there was an interesting conversation in the um in in the tribal for uh for the new Sele tribe uh where wendell was talking about being willing to stab anybody in the back and nick talking about how uh, there are a lot of old players playing as well and they play kind of a different game and that really does resonate i think that when you look at players like rob and parvati who are considered to be like the legend winners um right. the the way that they play the game and rob talked about this and parvati talked about this is that players who play together stick together have power together they get a group of people they stick together they they run through the game even parvati played that way she got her crew together she certainly betrayed people she convinced people to do dumb things but she had her crew she got her fun people that she could work with and she just rode with them to the end whereas some of these newer winners had a different strategy somebody like nick kind of bounced around somebody like adam bounced around all the time that's kind of the new state of the game and it, it's interesting to see these more old school players try to play there. Let's all just get a group together and stomp to the end. And it seems to not be working, which is definitely not helped by their legacy and their target on their back. Um, yeah. But but I think they're also <laughs> running into a wall of this idea of, you know, being able to be more flexible when it comes to uh, alliances and voting blocks and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, again, and you probably could speak to this better than me, but is is it fair to say that Rob tried to play a similar style that he's he's known for playing the yeah. scene or i mean so i again i i haven't seen his previous seasons but it just felt like sometimes you can't teach, teach an old dog new tricks and he went in there and said i'm gonna boston rob this bitch and then and, and see what happens and uh it just the everyone on that island has seen his season i'm sure of it and mm -hmm. i think many of them are fans of him i think he was referred to as the godfather multiple times so they all know him and uh, uh, you know, they when they saw him on the island, they probably saw a lot of things that they grew up envying and said, oh, I don't want to be the guy on the other end of this that goes home. So I, I in his defense, I'm you know, I don't think I'm bashing him here. You know, I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. I'm actually surprised he made it as far as he did. Yeah, me too. So so so, you know, to that point, uh, no hate on Boston Rob whatsoever. You know, he he did his thing and he made it further than I thought he was going to make it. I mean, there were times where I'm like, oh, they're going to vote out Rob this week, but they're going for guys around him. Like they were, he went for his, you know, the other, even the other tribe and his wife had one respectively. She's a great player too, but they were so scared of him. They got rid of her, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that's how much power that guy has. 
So um, kudos to him for making it as far as he did because, you know, like we had said, you know, with the statutes and stuff, he he didn't have much he didn't have much of a chance even on a all winter season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, so Rob is on extinction. They have to now flip over rocks to look for this thing. Yeah. Rob yep. tells us that uh, there's uh, about eight million rocks on this island. Uh, he yeah. knows because he's almost counted all of them. Um, <laughs> and uh, Tyson though figures out that the clue mentions getting there at the right time, which probably means around the tide. And so he goes, he finds it, um, and he has to do the the thing that you have to do sometimes when people are around. Uh, and so he he says that. Uh, I, I pretended to to take a tinkle, um, and then uh, I snagged the package and put it in the waistband of my man panties. Yeah, Tyson's <laughs> got some good sound bites, huh? Uh, he's good. He's, he's good. T- he's good TV, man. He's really, really good TV. I, he, I think he rubs some people the wrong way, but I, I think he, you could tell he's like super intelligent, mm-hmm. and I like that kind of humor where like sometimes you don't even get the joke because he's just smarter than you. <laughs> and so, and I just think he's like, you can just tell he's a really intelligent guy and he, his brain just works faster than everyone. So he has to like entertain himself. Like the peanut butter thing. It's like, he's just, he's just, he's just bored. He's just bored. It's great. So, so he finds an idol nullifier. He sells it to yeah. Parvati. He knows that she <laughs> has a bunch of uh, tokens <clears throat> and he says, uh, boom, I'm a proud papa of a fire token. Um, but now he has to decide what to do with it. Uh, and so I actually paused in here to read like what the actual options are here on the <laughs> okay. menu. Okay. Um, so here are the options that Tyson can choose from. Uh, you get one advantage in the return challenge from extinction with a maximum of three advantages. So you can purchase three advantages in the challenge to return to the game. They each cost one token. There's that you that you can then also purchase one idol with full power, but it only has power if you get back into the game. That costs three tokens. Then you have luxury items, which are basically food, uh, which you could get one pizza, a jar of peanut butter, bottle of wine six pack cold beer it says uh and then one more thing that i couldn't read because it was uh it was obstructed um and so tyson says i don't want to waste three tokens on an idol and not get back into the game i'd look the fool but i'm not a fool i don't think (laughs) so my only option is to purchase some peanut butter (laughs) a it's hilarious b it'll help me win the challenge to get back into the game some slack-jawed yokel from who knows where probably doesn't know the nutritional value of peanut butter, <laughs> but I do. I, I hope everyone picks up on the fact that he's being completely facetious. He's yeah. sarcastic. <laughs> but some people are probably thinking like, oh, he's an idiot. He's buying pe-. He knows what he's doing. He, he He's doing it for showmanship. He, but obviously also for the calories. But, mm-hmm. you know, he's... He's he's really witty. Really I did, witty. I, I did think it was an interesting choice. Um, yeah. That uh, he can he could have bought an advantage in the challenge to return to the game with this token. Instead, yep. he buys peanut butter, which I assume his his logic here is a it makes great television, and b yeah. it'll help me win the challenge more than an advantage will, which is right. not a terrible line of thinking. Uh, no, food Rob scares. mentioned yeah. Food Rob, scares on extinction. Rob mentioned this on the Know It Alls that we've seen people with advantages for a challenge plenty of times in the past on survivor and it's actually pretty rare that they need the advantage either need the advantage to win or the advantage helps them win when they otherwise wouldn't have basically the challenge is either your challenge to win or you're not going to win it like uh if you're bad at the challenge having an advantage is usually not going to help you win the challenge so With that in mind, if Tyson is, you know, who is a very physically capable player, a very great challenge competitor, if he is on point because he has a ton more calories in his system, that could theoretically be a better advantage than one out of a a maximum of three advantages, which might be small things that don't matter at all. Um, So I I actually don't mind this. Uh, It's definitely a risky play. It's definitely an out of the box play. Um, Jeff, who does like like sometimes does like little recaps of the episode. Um, he talked about this decision and uh, he, he told us that uh, he says that, uh, that they put the food items on extinction thinking nobody would buy them. Um, <laughs> but yeah. he was actually impressed by Tyson's decision and thinks it was a smart move. Yeah. I mean, the calories, I've never been in that position. You know, I've been a have not, 
but we're still eating. We can eat as much as we want of the slop. So I've never been starving like that. Um, but I can only imagine the morale boost it gives you to have that, that those nutrients, you know, to have that in your system. And I think although he's being funny and witty, I agree with you 100%. He, he was weak. He was hungry. He realizes he's going to be going against a group of people who are really malnourished. And that jar of peanut butter was huge. So he's really going to get a lot of protein from it. And uh, it's going to, again, at minimum, boost his morale, make him a little bit, make it a little bit easier to be there all day, every day. Um, so, yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. And, and I agree with everything you said as far as the advantages. We've seen some of the advantages in past competitions, and they're not like game changers, most of them. It's kind of like it, it helps you like prepare, but how many times have we seen someone get an advantage and not win the competition? Mm -hmm. like happens uh, all the time and it really was a massive jar of peanut butter like that's an insane it really, it's an insane yeah. amount of calories yeah i mean that's that was like the that was a huge i mean it looked like it was taken out of a regular jar like two but big tubs and put it i mean yeah once he saw it and he said it, he goes wow this is a lot bigger than i thought it was going to be like you know it made him even feel better about his decision because it's like it was like three or four jars of peanut butter to be honest it really was yeah he was probably expecting like you know the little jiff like jar you know right so yeah, now kudos to him. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if how that plays out when they actually do the you know competition to come back in the game. If it's something physical, if 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 he you know really steps it up because he's going against people like Natalie, who mm -hmm. you would expect to absolutely crush all of them in any type of physical competition. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see if his uh, his decision plays out. Yeah. So we get to the immunity challenge and they are informed that Boston Rob has been voted out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big reaction. We see mm -hmm. that Michelle in particular looks pissed um, that uh, Ben and Adam uh, betraying Boston Rob does not seem like it's going to sit well with Michelle, who already has kind of an in with Wendell to the Decal tribe, the old Decal tribe. Um, I have a feeling that uh, Ben and Adam might not find a place back in old Sele tribe uh, if, uh, if, if, they're, if, if people like Michelle have, a, have any say in it. Um, not that there's much power left there anyway. No. But, um, but yeah, she seemed very upset. Uh, Sandra and Denise looked surprised. Um, I was looking at Kim as well, uh, and she, she Kim doesn't usually have much of a reaction to, i was looking at i was trying to watch kim's reaction all episode because i was very curious to see where her, her head is at she's always so stoic she's always so uh i, I can't i can't get a good read on her yeah she's very calculated mm -hmm. very calculated doesn't show a lot of emotion and that obviously that's a good thing that's a good player yeah. um that's why she won again you know yeah the reaction was uh was what it, what's expected and again it all goes back to what they all really thought of rob even as winners themselves you know sometimes you have a situation where you know, winners meet winners or whatever. And it's like, Meh, I've done what you've done. But Rob really hell holds. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong here, but there's probably like two or three people, like definitive people on Big Bro on Survivor who are considered the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sandra, right? Sandra, I mean, Rob, Parvati. Rob, Parvati. I mean, there, there's no dispute about that, really, from what I've heard, from what I see. So when you have someone like that, Rob was the first one to fall. When you have something like that, it, it carries a lot of weight and it reverberates for, through everyone. You know, there's a statue that just fell. Yeah. And that's a, early, early in the game, too. So uh, I think it kind of made it was a reality check for everyone, too, because if he's capable of going home, everyone is. Yeah. And we're going to see as soon as one yeah. fell, the other Segway. come toppling Segway. down. <laughs> I mean, I, to be honest with you, I'm not saying it wouldn't have went down that way anyways, but don't think for a second psychologically it's like it shows, hey, listen, Rocky Five, he bleeds. He's human. He's a man. You know, like <laughs> yeah. you realize they can be cut. They're not, they're not, you know, they're not, what do you call it? Uh, gods. You know, they're not, go they're, they're mortals and they can be taken out just like you and I. And when they saw the opportunity to, you know, we'll go there. I don't want to get ahead, but, you know, they took advantage of it. Yeah. Um, we see some interesting stuff from Wendell. Now, in the previous episode, yeah. uh, we saw Wendell on the island with Michelle. Um, I talked with Matt about this. He 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 felt like he was on Team Wendell. Uh, I felt like this was from Michelle's perspective, that Wendell looked like the bad guy. <laughs> Matt has yeah. since uh, tweeted to me an apology. 
that he was wrong and that he is now Team Michelle um, after this episode because it really did feel like we're getting a lot of weird stuff from Wendell. And it started in this challenge where he goes to throw the immunity to Jeff. And Jeff's like, you're going to throw this? Really? Like, Jeff yeah. is giving him crap for it. And he's like, no, sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, it kind of yeah. makes him look like uh, like an angsty cheat teenager. Yeah. I, it's so hard for me to talk too much about these guys because I, I like Wendell. I've met Wendell. Great guy. He seems I've seen his first season. Uh, he's one of the first seasons I watched playing a, def- a very different game. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. He's a lot more candid, a lot more cutthroat. And uh, even his tribal was very odd to me about him basically saying, hey, if you give me a fire token right now, I'll vote the way you want me to vote. Mm-hmm. He probably wouldn't have. But again, when you're in that game, they don't know if you're being truth. Ben and you know who was it? It wasn't Ben. It was Nick and who were the who's his other alliance? Nick member? and Nick Yule. Nick and Yule. I'm sorry, Yule, uh, who I love by the way. Um, but those two were. I mean, they didn't show it in the show, but I'm sure there's part of him going, "Is he serious?" Or but he just seems very like confident right now. Like he knows what he wants to do. Yeah, and we'll, I mean Michelle. We'll has, that last. Michelle did say that uh, he really thought he was hot shit, and that's kind of yeah. what happened in the relationship. Well, I hope I hope Michelle. I hope Michelle. For her in this game, I really hope she starts owning the fact that she's a winner, and she seems really concerned with what people think about mm-hmm. her win. And that you can't think about it that way. As a winner, you you have to win for yourself. You have to win for the your friends and family. No disrespect to anybody watching this or anybody. But you shouldn't care what they think. They weren't there. They, they're, there's no benefit to them. There's no loss to them. So to be concerned about what people think that you may never meet, your your attention is focused in the wrong area. So I hope Michelle starts, if anything, if she doesn't win this season, she takes from it that she's a good player. Winners win because they deserve to win. And she is entitled to that title. And regardless of what happens this year, she's still going to be a winner. And so she doesn't. She shouldn't be there to prove it to anyone, especially people she doesn't know. And she has to have more confidence in herself. She doesn't yeah. need the approval of anyone. I mean, I think that you know we do the legacy watch at the end of every podcast uh, here, and I think that and if anything, that uh, that it has proven how ridiculous and arbitrary the audience yeah. tends to rate yeah. the players and the winners um, based on what they're seeing yeah. and should uh, hopefully help devalue uh, the uh, the presence of any sort of crit- criticism that uh, Michelle feels like she's yeah. uh, she's getting. I've seen the, the, the legendary thing quick you showed me before we started just to give me an idea what it was and you know even before you showed it to me I could have told you who was in the top tier who was in the middle tier who was in the lower tier because regardless of what happens on the season people have a very dedicated loyal uh, fan base mm-hmm. and you know it doesn't matter how they do how good they do they people are people are stuck in their their ways and they're going to go with whatever they think about the person regardless of what they do in a game and that's what she should that's what she should be co- you know taking to heart because whether she plays great whether she doesn't People are going to think what they want, but at the end of the day, it matters what she thinks about herself. And mm-hmm. that's all that should matter. Yeah. So uh, so they go into the challenge. It's uh, they, they go, They're going through. Now, there is one part of the challenge where they're, they're hauling up bags of rice. They're mm-hmm. putting it on a table. Yep. And then they're taking a knife and, like, stabbing it to death. Um I, this looked incredibly dangerous to me, like yeah. ridiculously so. Like like they were holding the bag of rice and viciously stabbing right yeah. near where their hand was. I was yeah, like waiting for somebody to chop their hand off. Like it, yeah, this was it insane. They were trying to spice it up. Survivor was like a lost finger here would be amazing. Uh, I guess so. I, I decided it was like yeah, uh, it really yeah. really uh, it shocked me. They, they uh, all signed the waiver, right? Okay, great. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I guess there's a knife clause, but there's no ladder yeah. clause. Yeah, um, no, it, was cool. it was cool. I like how Survivor just always switches it up, and they're using just very primitive things to do it. But kudos to them, man. They they are just studs. They just got it. But yeah. I also saw a behind the scenes thing that came out this year for Survivor, and I never realized how many people they have working on those in those scenes, like nine camera. It's mm-hmm. incredible, but. They got that budget. <laughs> they got that budget. Yeah. For sure. But it's, man, what an incredible show. It really is. I'm getting off topic good here, stuff. but it really good is. Stuff. Well, we see another moment from Wendell when they get to the puzzle portion. They're the, whatever you want to call it, the skill portion at the end. Yep. Um, Wendell is doing the the maze thing, and yep. he goes, watch this, Jeff. 
and then he drops it. And Jeff is like, oh, Wendell smack talking and drops it. Yeah, Jeff uh, was like, not happy with Wendell that whole competition. <laughs> yeah. And he will throw it in your face. Jeff yeah. Will, Jeff will make you eat your words. And yeah, that was a moment where uh, can't, you got to say he got what he deserved on that one. Got a little it, too cocky. It's kind of starting to feel like... Because Wendell seemed the like the complete opposite of this on his season. He seemed so yeah. cool and, yeah. s- and straight and like uh, well, people liked him. People liked him a lot, right? But I wonder how much of that was because he was next to Dom, who was very like big personality, exactly. And so it made Wendell yeah. look a lot more chill. Um, yeah. But but now that he's on his own, uh, we're we're seeing a little bit uh, more of his his personality pop sure. because he's not right and, next to the big. And, and for some people, when you win. It can change you. You know, he won, yeah. won pretty recently. And I think over time, I'll be the first, you know, you first come off the show, you win and get a little swag to you. But as years go on, you become more humble and you realize, listen, you know, there's, everyone here is great. And I think it's fresh for him still. And he thinks he's the big man on campus. Um, but I, I don't think with play, playing that way, that's going to sit well, especially with some of the old school players. And I have a, if he continues to play this way, I think it's gonna be very difficult for him to get to the end. I really do. I think someone's gonna say, "Okay, if you're ever that good, let's see you get out of this." Mm-hmm. You know, but we'll yeah. see. He could prove us all wrong, right? And of course, uh, there's always a chance that this, you know, uh, it's that it's mostly just you know the editing. Certainly, they can't yeah. make things up that didn't happen, but right? they can well, highlight some things and maybe avoid it's a others. strategy by him. Maybe I don't know why, but maybe it's a strategy by him. You know, thinking. If I come in here and I'm kind of cocky and a jerk a little bit, people are going to think I'm an easy target to get out at the end because he was so nice the first time around. Everyone was like, oh, if Wendell gets to the end, we're all going to lose to him. Yeah. You know, because he was there with who? Who was he there with? Dom? When, Wendell, Dom, and uh, and um, I'm, so, I'm so bad with Ooh, names sometimes. Gotcha. I spoke with well, Laurel. Laurel. Laurel well, wasn't here. Moral of the story is he was very well liked on a season, the furniture and all that stuff. So, you know, he's someone where like, don't want to have sitting next year because you know he's really loved by everyone so maybe he's thinking he has to do this because he's very well liked in the community um both by survivor players and by you know uh fans i can tell you i liked i liked the kid a lot i met him i think it was at hearts of reality i can't remember where i met him super nice guy super yeah nice guy, I, I, so. was, I was i was like super super big fan of wendell yeah. uh when he won yeah. his season so it's <clears throat> yeah, weird watching nice. this watching this season and yeah, there being different. such a turnaround here you made a good point though could be editing Always yeah. got to play. That's the one downfall with survivors. You don't get that behind the scene to make your own opinion about someone. You're only getting what they want to show you. And this season, a big storyline is the previous relationship between Michelle and Wendell. We don't know what happened between the two of them. You know, she's speaking about it more than him. Mm-hmm. But maybe he's he wasn't happy with the way things went. For you know, again, it's none of our business. But I, I'm with you. It's definitely different seeing that from Wendell. Yeah, I, and I'll say like if it is if it is editing, editing like. He's making it easy for him. That's that's what I'll say he's, about that. He's, yeah, he's giving him the sound bites for sure. <laughs> yeah, his facial expressions. And yeah, I agree, hundred percent. So uh, Yara, the Yara tribe is going to win. That means Adam is safe. You could see in Adam's Huge. face when he when it was when Jeff said that uh, two tribes are going to tribal. Um, Adam looked like he was going to die. Yeah, uh, he was dead. And then when they won, it looked like he had just found out that uh, he won two million dollars. Uh, yeah, he was... he's a, he's another one. Again, love Adam. Met mm-hmm. him in person. Awesome dude. He was a little cocky at the beginning too, but he just got checked real fast. He got punched mm-hmm. in the mouth and was like, "Whoa, I am so sorry. <laughs> I, I am so sorry. I take back everything I said. This, I am above. I am way above my head here. So I'm gonna just shut up and please don't have it. You know, get. He got it really checked fast, so he got a reality check. But he had a little bit of a swag to him in some of his confessionals. You know, or was it? You know, like relax, play the game. You're playing against studs here, and they will take your head off. So um, he got humbled, and now you're seeing a point where he's just trying to hang on for dear life. He's just like, please, God, let me stay, because he really does love the game. Mm-hmm. And I think I think he wants to prove to himself that he's not only a winner, but he's one of the best winners ever, because I think Adam's probably one of the biggest super fans in there, and he really does 
have an actual love for the game which is you can appreciate and you the, see it yeah the, one of the things i love most about adam is that he is just consistently the most passionate guy out yep. there um, trying hard even with yeah. that you probably talk about this episode but jumping up for the key mm -hmm. i mean he's got no calories in him he's doing it multiple times that was super tall this the thing is moving heart man just gotta love it just gotta love it you yeah. love people who get to live out their dream and appreciate what they're doing and i think now he's appreciating every day because he realizes it, it truly could be his last he's in a tough spot right now yes so uh adam tells us this is like winning two immunities back to back because two two people are going to travel yeah, uh, yeah we're skipping over it. so this was uh this really actually was a great thing for him i didn't even think about that but he's right yeah it's a great thing yeah so we head over to Sele, the new Sele tribe and parv knows she's in trouble mm -hmm. um and uh i actually i actually still loved this segment from parvati uh the, you know this is you know really this her, her trying to stay um basically as soon as this tribe was formed at the swap i knew if they ever lost parvati was screwed because yeah michelle dated wendell and wendell nick and yule were already a tight alliance in their original tribe they weren't even like in separate factions they were already like a probably had like a final three of some sort right yeah so yeah. um so that was a really rough spot for her to be in mm -hmm. and i still but you you can just <clears throat> tell by the way that parvati talks you can see why she is so good um just by like the way that she operates in the game and how she is like how she reads people um the first time we saw her she immediately noticed that wendell was closed off um and so uh, we hear that she's in trouble. We hear from uh, Yule, Nick, and Wendell that they're just voting out Parvati. They're just going to hope that she doesn't have anything, which unfortunately for her, she got a idol nullifier and not some kind of idol and yeah. sometimes that's all the difference yeah. um and so uh nick tells us he's bummed because parvati is his survivor crush as we've yeah. heard for now the third episode in a row yep. 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 Um, but he says wendell and you are my closest allies in the game and so uh parvati and michelle say they need to find a fracture Parvati says, every time she talks to Yule, he's closed off. He's crossing his arms. He's crossing his legs. Not open at all. Um, so she knows she's not getting anywhere with him, which is a great read because she's not getting anywhere with him. He's in one of the best spots in the game. Why would he ever lose these two people who are great, right. uh, you know, essentially pawns for him, it seems, right now? Um, and then so they, they decide the only option is Nick. But Michelle tells us she doesn't think this is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. She she was she was right. <laughs> yeah. I mean when you when you have a shot at someone like Parvati and and the 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 three guys do seem to be pretty tight with each other. You know, I think Survivor did a good job of doing what they could to kind of edit it and keep us on our toes, but I think anybody who's you know, been around reality TV for a little bit realized pretty quickly that logically it wouldn't make sense and then the fact that they were playing so heavy on Wendell maybe, you know, voting the way she wanted for the i was it was it was going the other direction so far i was like she's gone he was yeah. playing with her he was just trying to get some tokens yeah. um but uh yeah no it was pretty obvious michelle said it i like that they threw that in there in the show because they were like hey listen you know let's be real here you have a choice between parv or nick nothing against nothing against nick but you know Parp, Parp, you gotta go. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta so go. Michelle, Michelle wants to also like the fire tokens are a big theme of the episode, right? Yeah. Uh, where Michelle is trying to get Parvati's fire tokens because she has three left, um, yeah. and that's a huge number. It's more than anyone else in the game right now, except for billionaire Natalie on Extinction. Um, yeah. And yeah. so, uh, so uh, Michelle goes to Wendell and basically asks for permission, um, which tells me that right from the get go, despite the tension that we're seeing in the episodes and the edit that they immediately were like we're working together right yeah um yeah. and so she's asking permission for him can i pretend i'm still just with parvati so that i can get her fire tokens and i'll vote you out because she wants to vote you out uh and he was like no no yeah no <laughs> no absolutely not <laughs> uh yeah. and and he he makes he says uh okay you've had a relationship with her for 16 days you i've we, you've I, you've known me longer than 16 days um mm. and this is not this is not vibing well with michelle who tells us no. that uh, she's pissed that wendell doesn't trust her especially because he was the one that burned her in their relationship and right. she feels like she's giving 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 <clears throat> and he's taking 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 um yeah. so it's not a, not a great look yeah, you know, and I kind of, I, I was more on Wendell's side on this one because anytime someone comes to me 
mm-hmm. and says, hey, I want to vote you out so I can get an advantage of the game. Even if you don't go home, um, I'm going to risk your life so I can get ahead, knowing that at the end of the day, only one person is going to win the game. Why would I help you get ahead in the game when I'm trying to beat you? You know, let's just be keep it even with we'll voter out and we're all in the same playing field, although we all have one less person we have to beat. So I kind of agree with him where it's like, no, I mean, that's two votes. All we need is one person to flip and I go home. And I think if Michelle was going to do it, she should have just did it and not asked for permission. Yeah. And then she, say, sorry, I had to do it because I had to get, his to- I had to get her yeah. tokens. Or, I mean, I, I know it's kind of tough in Survivor because you can see the handwriting and they all know each other's handwriting, I'm sure. But, you know, hey, that wasn't me that wrote that. You know, I don't know. I vote. <laughs> I vote. You know, you could do that in Big Brother. You can't really do that in Survivor, I guess. Right. Because yeah. I think after the first week, you know, everyone's handwriting, mm-hmm. you know, so. But yeah, just either do it or don't, but don't ask for permission. Yeah. You know, deal with it afterwards and go, oh, I'm so sorry. I was just trying to get the fire tokens. I have them. You know, I knew you weren't going to go home, but that's why I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want to put that idea in anybody's head to send you home. Yeah. So we then see Parvati go to Wendell and they have one of those fake conversations that are obviously yep. fake, right? Where yeah, they're both feeling each other out. They're We've pretending. Been, been yeah. And and well, again, what I love from Parvati is that she always knows. And so in this conversation, she's like, she's like, I just feel like you're effing with me. Yeah. I just feel like, uh, like, what are we doing here, Wendell? She kept her, yeah, she kept her respect. She was like, you're not going to make me look like a fool here. Yeah. I'm going to come here and kiss your ass. You know? And so he, he offers, he says, all right, well, I will, I will vote with you if you give me two fire tokens. And mm-hmm. she's like, okay, so after? She says, no, before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's like, yeah. okay, well, <clears throat> yeah, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was, uh, again, it's all kind of what we've been talking about. Wendell has a lot of confidence right now. And I, you know, we'll see how that works out. But it didn't work out for him after Parvati went home because, or to the extension island, because she gave them to someone else, gave the tokens to someone else. So it's almost like with Tyson, he respected Nick Mm -hmm. and the fact that he got him out and he did it in the right way. And he said, hey, here you go. Here's my token. But with Parvati, I don't think she probably liked the way he tried to make her look stupid or make her look desperate or whatever he was, you know, she took it as. And so she basically said, well, I think she would give him to Yule. She ended up giving him to Michelle. So it did, it did work out for Michelle to vote with Parvati. Right. Um, right. You're right. So, uh, but yeah, so, uh, Parv, what ends up happening is Parv goes to Nick and says, Hey, Wendell told me that he would vote with me for two fire tokens. Um, and I, yeah. Nick is visibly disappointed. And I think this is a genuine reaction from Nick. I agree. He tells us that he's talked with Wendell about going to the end together. Um, but now he feels like he talks the talk, but he's not sure if he walks the walk. Yeah. And he tells us that he's been on cruise control, just trying to make the merge. But now he feels like maybe he has to start playing. Um, yeah. Now we know that he doesn't flip and they're trying to make this seem like he's talking about flipping. I think that what he's probably talking about here is, I don't know if I can trust Wendell to go to the end with him. He's yeah, trying forward. to make these side deals, get these fire tokens. He's being this, you know, big sort of, uh, you know, like like trying to like trying to make a move like that. Like nobody would like nobody nobody's gonna buy it. Everybody sees yep. it's it's like one of those things. It's like uh, all right, give me your fire tokens. I'll vote for you. Sure. Uh, like even making the move is almost kind of an insult. I feel. Yeah, and and not only that, he didn't even. Uh... He wasn't even like authentic about it. Like he was just like, yeah. yeah, like you just said, like, give me your tokens. I'll vote for you. Like he, even his demeanor wasn't good. Like sell it. Hey, listen, I really like you. Give me your tokens and I got you. I'm going to, we're going to get through this. Like he was just like, yeah, give me a to-. Like it was just like very passive and kind of like a half ass effort. And he was like, hey, you want to be stupid and give them to me? Great. If not, I'm going to go back to my water. Yeah. You know? And we're so. going to see a master class from Denise on how to sell uh, <laughs> sell something like this uh, later yep. in the episode. Yes, we are. Um, so uh, he does discuss voting Wendell out with Michelle, but obviously that's not going to happen. Yep. Um, so we then get to DeCall, um, new DeCall. And uh, we're going to hear from Tony, who is worried about Sandra flipping on him. And he's also worried, what if what if Denise or Jeremy have an idol? And so his solution is going to get into his spy bunker. He's going to eavesdrop. He's going to figure out if there's any idols going on, if there's any if there's any flipping happening. Um, I love so Tony. Funny, man. I love love the shot of Tony peeking out of his spy bunker. How, how, do, how do they not see it? I don't know how they don't see it. How? <laughs> It's how so do, good. How, how do you not see it? 
seriously, how do you not see this big pile of hay that wasn't there the day before? I mean, it's hilarious, but it really seems like they didn't know where it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, so here's the thing. Heading into this episode, especially, you know, doing the podcast, I'm very aware of this, but also, you know, plenty of people are detail oriented. They really, you know, think about these things ahead of time. They pay attention to who has what kind of advantage. Um, But if you're paying attention, then you know that on this tribe, Jeremy has safety without power. He can leave tribal. He's completely safe. Um, Denise has an idol. Kim has an idol. Um, uh, Sandra has an idol that has to be used which means that Tony is the only person on this tribe with nothing, which means flashback to Game Changers when uh, when we saw um, that, you know, everybody, everybody plays uh, their their thing, their their power, their idols, their advantages. And um, and we end up seeing that uh, um, man names uh, Sari goes home. Um, Yeah. And. I'm convinced, along with I think many other people, uh, that this is going to happen to Tony. Um, and and like irony of ironies, Tony gets idle advantage, I, idle advantage getting out of the game uh, because of this. Because you have to imagine Sandra has to play her idol, so she'll play it. If Sandra plays it, maybe that worries people. Uh, certainly, somebody like Jeremy or uh, Jeremy might leave, and that might prompt Denise to play her idol, and then Sandra will play hers, and then Kim will be like, "Well, I have to play mine," and then Tony's done. That felt like the only way this could play out. I th- I was completely convinced that there was no possible way this tribal would end with anything but Tony's elimination. Um, and so when we start off the the segment here with Tony jumping in his spy bunker and them all being like where's tony uh is he doing his spy bunker thing um i was like oh man this is this is the end for tony tony in his ladder yeah nail in a coffin yeah tony one great tv two i'm super biased because he's a cop so i'm super biased um and i love the way he's playing this year he is still irrational but that's just who he is but he's still the sad thing is he's toned down from what we've seen which is sad to say but he's definitely a little he's like a mild tony which is like crazy to think but um yeah i i had i had the way they were editing the episode and making such a big deal out of the spy bunker which kind of amounted to nothing like they didn't even talk near the spy bunker Mm -hmm. i was like damn it this is because he's about to go home so they're giving him the segment because this is the reason he's going home yeah but yeah we got something different though we did. So Jeremy asks Sandra, like, what's the move? Um, and she says, I'm sticking with original to call. How, how does that affect you? He's like, well, I'm not original to call. So yeah, it's not great for me. Um, yeah. He reminds us that he has safety without power. Uh, he says it'll be in his pocket <laughs> waiting. He's quick on the draw. Yeah. Um, Jeremy he's, playing a great, he's playing a great game so far. Has been he's playing my, great. He's my also pick to great sound bites. Yeah, uh, he ha- he's so great with the analogies and the metaphors and the like quick witted like uh, yeah. we're going to talk about his duck analogy uh, yeah. later on. Um, he has been fantastic this season. I'm super biased because he's a personal friend of mine. Um, he's come down with Val to uh, my premieres for Breaking Homicide and stuff like that, like dr- driven down with his wife to come watch. So he's got my utmost support. I, pu- I tweeted out something today just basically saying like. My pick is Jeremy to win. I don't know who wins, obviously, but he's my pick to win. And uh, I said it before the season started. I hope he pulls it off. Even if he doesn't, though, he has played perfectly because I personally think he's so underrated as a winner. I think he's one of the best players. Like, he physically, he's shredded. He's super smart. He's got a crazy good social game. I would not want to play against him, personally. And, and, and like, he's, like, not in the conversation of, like, the best ever, which that's fine. He hasn't played you know, as many times as some of the other guys, but what, this is his third time playing, right? Yeah. And every time he's played, you got, even the season he lost, he played incredible. Like, mm-hmm. and one of the seasons, the season he, he won the season that Val was on, right? Uh, no, he lost that one. Which, which is what I'm getting at because that's a tough season to win when you got to worry about your wife too. And like, you're trying to like, you know, 
But he still got very far in that season, though, didn't he? He made he made the merge, and it was that he was in charge of one alliance, and then there was another player in charge of another big alliance. Uh, he won the first battle, I think, and then uh, and then kind of got like sniped from yeah. uh, from some retaliation stuff. But yeah. then his essentially his partner Natalie ended up winning the yeah. season. Overall, I just think like his body of work is just incredible. I think he's a great player. And uh, I think his ability to kind of blend with the times and adapt is why he's so dangerous and why he's so good. Because even though he's one and he's a, he physically looks like a threat, people don't really aren't really talking about him right now. They're not really talking about him. And like you would think they'd want to get him out over Denise. Nothing against Denise, but he's a much bigger threat in competitions than her. Well, and he's yet, a lion. They got to get rid of the hyenas. Yeah, I guess. Or that's the same thing. The mentality with Rob. It's like. Go for the guy, get him, and you cut off the head, and everyone else is going to scatter. But he's playing an incredible game again. Super biased, but he's my he's 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 one. Him and Mike Holloway are my two favorite players. There you go. Um, so Denise says that uh, Denise asks Sandra, "Is there any wiggle room on the vote?" Uh, Sandra's like, "We got to talk somewhere different." Uh, yeah. She's worried about Tony listening. In. Yeah, the fact that I really thought they were making a big deal out of this because he was going to go home. I really did. So it was interesting. It was funny coming from Sandra, too, because on her first season, infamously, she uh, eavesdrops on uh, Johnny Fairplay um, when he's talking with somebody and then uses that information against him. Uh, and so uh, she knows exactly how effective this can be even though it is pretty funny um so yeah, that, woman, that woman's intuition that woman's intuition is incredible yeah she's, she's she knows her stuff um so denise says that she would love to save her idol if she can um but uh sandra is saying to call is solid is that is that the truth you wanted denise uh yeah. <laughs> you're a wonderful person um denise is like okay i'm a wonderful person but you're voting me out she's like eh. No, not necessarily. Um, and so Denise tells us Sandra really believes she's in charge of the game. Uh, and that's a way to play. It's not the way that I play. So my strategy is to play it humbly. Play that uh, I need them and that uh, they don't need me. Uh, and so... Um, I mean, we're going to see that 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 pays off. Uh, mm -hmm. She makes she tries to say, oh, well, Jeremy's the bigger threat. Um, and then Kim starts talking about how she's nervous about where Tony is. They talk about the spy shack and they say, don't talk near the water. Well, that's where it was last time. Um, Again, Tony pops they out. They didn't see it. Yeah, well, it's, it's, well, Tony, I don't think they went to the water well at all. And then Tony finally pops out right as they get there. And he's like, oh, that was terrible timing. And you see yeah. Tony like, I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous. Uh, yeah. I, I, I fell out of a tree. <laughs> Yeah, my, my ladder broke. Yeah, he's hilarious. <laughs> um, so Kim says this is concerning. Uh, yeah. And Tony and Jeremy talk about how the threats need to stay together, which means they need to take out Denise. Now, Jeremy, when he won Game Changers, he talked a lot about the strategy that helped him win, which was the meat shield strategy. Yeah. He likes to keep around big targets because he knows he's a big target himself. That's what clipped him in his first season is yep. that yep. he was a big dog. He took out the other big dog and then he was the only big dog left and it, they, they all, you know, gathered up and took him out and right. so his second time around he uh sorry yeah, second chance i said game changers i meant second chance i get those names confused all the time um there's a lot but, of them there is um but uh so on his second season in second chance he uh he kept the bigger targets around him and it it led to success and so heading into this season a lot of people know about his meat shield strategy and so a player like adam went into the season saying i want jeremy out because I know I'm not going to be one of his meat shields. Uh, yeah. I'm not that kind of player, which I thought was really smart. But then he got onto the tribe and they didn't vote Jeremy out. They voted yeah, Natalie out first. Yeah, he's um, got skills. So Jeremy he did something skills. right there. Yeah, he's got um, skills. Yes. So he's talking to Tony and Tony feels the same way because on Game Changers, the actual Game Changers this time, mm -hmm. uh, Tony and Sandra got into it right away. Sandra took out Tony, and then Sandra ended up following Tony. Um, and and Sandra came into the season thinking, I should probably reevaluate that strategy, maybe keep around bigger targets. Tony says he absolutely wants to keep around bigger targets. So that's a big narrative here on the tribe, and it fits perfectly with Jeremy's known strategy of keeping meat shields around. Yeah. Um, so Kim is obviously a huge threat as well, a big target. And so it falls on Denise, and Denise is going to go home. But 
Sandra says, I don't know how I feel about Denise going home. Uh, you know, I get that the targets need to stay together, but I have a lot of people on the other side with, that are with me as well. So I feel like Tony is the only one that benefits from Jeremy staying around. Uh, so she goes to Denise and she, she asks Denise, uh, what will you trade for your, for your fire tokens? Um, and Denise is like, uh, what, what, what do you got? Uh, she says, I will give you an idol for your fire tokens, your two fire tokens. Um, and she says, you're being voted out. So I will give you this idol. You can decide which of the two boys go home, but don't touch me or Kim. Um, and <laughs> Denise is like, sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I thought this was really interesting. So, so Sandra says that y you can choose which of the two boys you want to go home, meaning Jeremy or Tony, um, but don't touch me or Kim. Super surprising considering where Kim stood at the start of the season where she was really on the outs. Um, again, like I said, I was really honed in on Kim in this episode, especially on the rewatch, because she has a fantastic reputation. In fact, I, I, it's interesting talking to you here because I think that she's probably the most comparable player to you in that she won her first season playing in a very dominant fashion and instantly jumped up into the top tier of winners um, just by playing one season. That She jumped up there with people who play multiple seasons. Um, but when she started this season, she started on the bottom. And in the Legacy Watch, we'll see how it sticks, she dropped pretty far initially because people were like, oh, maybe she's not as good as we thought. Um, and so I think that we're seeing here that I feel like she probably is as good as we thought because what she's managed to do, surviving that initial Decal tribe, getting into the swap, now she's more important to Sandra than either Tony or Jeremy, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to protect Kim. <clears throat> um, Kim has an idol in this round and doesn't play it and we'll talk about that but that's an insane move uh that like good call from kim um and so uh she was also in the swing vote position in this tribe um and had the most amount of power it seemed uh that didn't really come up this time and i know that they were wondering on the know-it-alls why did kim not even seem to consider flipping and going with denise and jeremy and I'm, I'm still not entirely sure. I think that one, one reason might be that uh, uh, Yule and Sophie were trying to reel her in on the other mm -hmm. tribe. That yep. didn't come up in the episodes too much. But if she feels like she has an in with them, then she doesn't have an incentive to betray her alliance. I think another reason might be Boston Rob got voted out. And when she sees Boston Rob getting voted out, she knows there's not, a really, there's not really anywhere to jump to. That right. whole Sele yeah. tribe is completely a disaster. So why would she risk her position in the majority right now when she doesn't know where everything stands on the other tribe when she can kind of hold off and wait and then see where she can go once they hit the merge? Um, so I do wonder if that had any, uh, had any Im uh, influence over her decision this week. Yeah, I, I haven't seen Kim's first season. I've definitely heard the comparison of her game to mine. Um, just looking at, again, like you asked me about Boston Rob earlier, I saw she was in a little trouble earlier in the game where, you know, people were looking at her. She was kind of on the outs, and now she's kind of faded back into the background again. And so to your point, without seeing her previous season, just judging her on this season alone, um, she is a, she does appear to be a very good player. And uh, if you had told me, oh, yeah, she won a season before, kind of, you know, dom I would completely buy it because she's for her to get out of that pickle and kind of get back in good graces and being the numbers and all that good stuff, it does speak to – how good of a player she is and it will be interesting that's one i didn't see on your chart where she is now because again to our point earlier you know are, are the watchers are the people who are voting basing it on what they're seeing or are they basing it on their preconceived loyalties to certain individuals so I, i'm actually interested to see that as well yeah, I mean, I think something that we've been seeing is that the players who have a longer history are yeah. more stable in the rankings, and the oh, yeah. players with uh, with a smaller amount of history I mean, more variable. I mean, I see it in my, I see it in me, you know, my, you know, not. To, I don't want to make this about me or Big Brother because some of you people don't even watch Big Brother. Probably, you know, they probably only watch one or the other. But I'm in the same boat. You know, I only have one season, and I thought I pre played a pretty good season, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, but when you start comparing me to like the Dan and Wills, they played twice 
And because they played twice, I'm, I shouldn't even speak about it. You know, it's they played twice. Mm-hmm. That's it. You can't you can't be as good. You didn't play twice. So, again, I agree with you. You know, when you have that loyalty, they've been on two seasons, 200 days for, I think, Dan, probably. You know, he's been in the house and Will, same thing, All-Stars. And so they played a long time and they have a very loyal fan base. And, again, back to about Michelle, you go in there, you play for yourself. And I think Kim is really playing for herself. I don't think she cares what anybody thinks. I don't think she cares that she won the last time. She's in there playing this season. She has mentioned a couple times that she did very well the first time. She was always in control. She She's self-aware. She understands mm-hmm. this is not her previous season. She knows she's going to have to play a little differently, work a little harder, and probably be a little bit more humble and kind of like, I'm the injured fawn. Don't take me out. you know. And she, She's doing a great job. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if she goes very far. Yeah. Um, so uh, Sandra says that uh, her and Tony are a good team right now. But yeah. she knows her days are numbered with him. He'll yeah. take her out if she doesn't take him out again. She's probably um, not wrong. <laughs> she's probably not wrong. No. Yeah. Uh, they, so they, they uh, this is a funny moment. They pretend to talk about cupcakes when she's talking to Denise to Denise because uh, Kim walks yep. in. Uh, this is a very Big yeah. Brother moment because this happens it's all so the is. time on Big Brother. It so is. When I saw. It, I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh my god, I've had a dollar for every time I've done that. <laughs> You know, yeah. and you have to always tell the person, oh, we're just talking about cupcakes or his sister. Like, it's not enough for them just to hear it. Yeah. You want them to make sure they know that that's what you're talking. And when they do that, that's the moment when you walk and you go, they weren't talking about it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but they are. Oh man! Um, so Denise uh, says, "What's in it for Sandra? Uh, is that uh, her hands are clean? She's trying to get away with this." So, yeah. San- and Sandra says, "You can never tell anyone I did this for you." And this, I feel, is obviously, I think the 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 whole thing is a mistake. But this, I feel, is one of the big roots of Sandra's miscalculation here, which is that she thinks that she can give this idol to Denise and make this move and have Denise do it for her, and then Denise will keep this secret and it will get no blood on Sandra's hands. But that's not really how these games work, nope. right? These, like, Denise has almost no incentive to keep this a secret nope. after I it thought happens. She was gonna, I thought she was going to blow it up at the tribal. Right. I thought she was going to blow it up at the tribal. If, and, and if not, then, like, next time when it's Denise on the chopping block, why does Denise not then say well guess guess what happened last tribal guys she gave me an idol and told me to do this uh like of course the secret's going to get out the idea that like i'm gonna do this so that it keeps my hands clean is is flawed to begin with yeah i thought it was a big mistake i mean of all people sandra should know by the way i had a privilege of meeting sandra for the first time all the another sweet woman like so nice um actually met her at the rob has a podcast oh. uh, premiere party. She's a very nice woman. She, I didn't think she knew who I was. She came up and was like, hey, I, I know who you are. And I was, <clears throat> I was like, oh, shit. She's like really badass at Survivor. That's cool. But um, really nice. We're Twitter friends now, so we're best, we're best friends. <laughs> but um, yeah, this was a bad decision. And the reason it's a bad decision is because you have to always keep in mind that every single person in there, no matter how close you are to them, and in this case, they weren't close, they're eventually your competition. And at some point you are handing them over a piece of information that is extremely valuable. So although you're trading with them something tangible, you're giving them intelligence that they can ultimately confirm with a tangible item in in the shape of an idol. And so to say to her, you can never tell anyone this. Why would she not do that if it meant her going home? She's going to do that. So yeah, it was flawed from the beginning. You know, I think it was a lapse in judgment. I don't know what she was thinking, you know, behind the scenes. There might have been more to her methodology, but I agree with you. It was, it was flawed from the beginning. And the minute she said, you know, you can't tell anyone ever. I'm like, well, that, this is this is Survivor. Like, what? But she did it, and uh, we saw how it played out. <laughs> yeah, Denise tells us, I already have an idol. <clears throat> this idol will allow me to make a move that, for the first time in my Survivor career, could be game-changing. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't kidding. Um, and she so then wrong. Denise is going to take it a step further. She knows what she's going to do yeah. to Sandra. And so she says, hey, Sandra, how about this? I'll give you one token now. Uh, and then after I know it's real, when we get back from tribal, I'll give you the other token. Phenomenal. Yeah. And the fact that she thought about that in the moment, you know, this wasn't like a plan she came up with later to, to do what she eventually did. She knew in that moment how she was going to play it. Mm-hmm. And that's 
incredible. Yeah, she says, I can pick any one of these people and send them home. I've never yep. had power like in th- this in the game yep. ever. Yep, yep. And that was it was perfect in the fact that she kind of calculated it in her head, played it cool, and, you know, I thought what she asked, like, one now, one later, is a completely reasonable request. It's not suspicious. I think anybody, even if they were planning on honoring it, would want to do that because you could get up there after giving two tokens and it could be a fake idol. So, yeah, no, very, very impressive. And if I would like to think that move in and of itself would move would tip a scale and move her up a tier because that's a move that takes incredible you know strategic planning and um, the the ability to pull it off perfectly like stone that. cold killer killer absolute killer yeah no we'll talk about it but there yeah. was one flaw in that though but I'll, we'll get to it we'll, we'll get to it yeah. um so and we're like dying to get to it we're like, right yeah allowed. so we're heading into tribal now and there's a yeah. lot there's a lot to get into there too so uh yeah, we get for, we first get to the cell tribal yeah. um and there were there was some interesting stuff here uh wendell says this he said this in the previous episode in a confessional so now he's saying it in tribal this is the season of pre-existing relationships and friendships yeah. Yeah. um but i came into this game trying to compartmentalize mentalize things i came in willing to do anything to win two million dollars i'll stab anyone in the back i'll stab you in the front um and this does not ring well with the other people in tribal um Mm -hmm. nick says and i thought he said this really well actually um he says well look we both played recently and that's how we won but we're also playing with people that might not value that philosophy in Survivor. So I don't know if that's the right approach this season. Uh, and that's a really good point as well, because what we were talking about when it comes to the evolution of the game and having more knowledge and being more up on how to uh, play the game in the current environment, that's all well and good, but you also still have to remember that there's a jury and that a lot of the people on this cast, especially on the Extinction Island version of a jury where everybody is in the jury, um, a lot of people on this jury are more old school players and Mm -hmm. might not have as much respect for this new school style of play. Uh, And I think it was really interesting that Nick saw that and, and pointed out like Nick who has not had a lot of screen time on the show thus far uh, other than talking about having a crush on Parvati uh, mm-hmm. I thought this was really insightful from him and it does seem like he, he's got he's really got his head in the game and he's not in a bad spot here no yeah Nick is uh, I think he's underrated I think when he's playing against some of the greats that he's playing against it's easy to overlook him but again not to again sound like broken records he's played recently he's a big fan of the show he has all the and, you know, all the recipes from the previous cookbooks in his cookbook. He's seen all those seasons and um, he's got a way about him where he doesn't come off as someone who you have to worry about. Like He's not intimidating, but then he makes these moves that show he, he knows what he's doing and he's calculated. So uh, I'm impressed with Nick. Uh, I can't, and that's the thing. He's so hard to read. You don't know if this is like luck or he's this good. He's the, just that good. So he did make a great point. I love how they kept flashing to Yule as the old, you know, player. Mm-hmm. And you would think like someone like Yule, who's very like noble, wouldn't like something like that. Yeah. So I liked how they kept flashing to him to say like a guy like Yule probably isn't going to respect that. So, you know, you might want to think about it. Plus the, like you said, the people already over in extension Island, they're not going to like that. Yeah. Nick, uh, definitely an interesting player. He's uh, also a, a big brother fan um, and really took yeah. some of those strategies to Survivor. He had I named alliances um, and, uh, and and stuff like that. So um, yeah. he's definitely one to watch, even though he hasn't gotten much uh, in terms of screen time so far. But Parv says, yes, you know, the way I play is that uh, I like to, uh, you know, get with the f- I want to work with the fun people and not people the backstab like um and that's kind of true with parvati she is yeah. a backstabber but like i said she is more of an old school player she gets with an alliance um and she kind of just hangs wants to with ride them. it out yeah, yeah. Wants to ride it out um so wendell says well uh, oh, hold on i want to clarify something before i get painted in a certain way people are saying that style of play won't work this time i didn't say i've I'm doing it yet. I'm just saying I'm willing to do it. Uh, So some people should appreciate when people keep it real with them. And this is, I'm like, this is why I'm saying it's, he's making it real easy for the edit to paint him in a certain way, because this is not a good look here. Um, And Parv says, and it's been difficult, it's been difficult to have conversations with you, man. Uh, And Wendell says, uh, well, I thought people would respect realness. I kept it real with you today, Parv. Um, And uh, she's like, well, you, you offered me 
a deal. You said that you would vote with me if I gave you a couple of tokens. Um, and he said, yeah, you know, with these fire tokens, they could be valuable. So uh, I, I made an offer. It's uh, and, and Jeff asks, is it a is it a past invitation or a current invitation? Is this a current current invitation? Couldn't believe you said that. Yeah, I can. <clears throat> I couldn't. I was I was I was perplexed by the whole thing. But again, if he ends up winning, we'll all be like, wow, he just told him what he was going to do and he did it. But no, I think uh, I think this is going to totally come back to bite him. I think he kind of caught himself there. He realized it was going down the wrong path, tried to recover a little too late. And then, you know, I'm really glad Parvati didn't give him the coin of tokens because we both know he probably wouldn't have voted in her, yeah. you know, favor. So it would have just it would it would have kind of diminished who she is as a player to have someone play you like that at tribal and make you give up your co tokens before voting you out. So I was really happy for Parvati that she didn't fall for it. She showed exactly why she's considered one of the best because even in that moment where she's desperate and wanting to stay in the game. She saw through the bull and was like, "Buddy, I'd rather go home than make you look, make me look like a let you make me look like a fool." So yeah, and again, it, it is it, it's it's it was kind of insulting. In the whole exchange, really was. was just not yeah. great. She, she, so yeah. she, you want to do something, Wendell? It's like, if you want to do something. Yeah, no, I loved how she kept her composure. She was <laughs> giving it right back to him. You want to do something, Wendell? Oh, you're gonna say a name? You know, like she knew. She's like, guy, there's no way you're keeping you're keeping your word. You just want my tokens, and I'd rather take them and give them to who I want to give them to, which, you know. Yeah. We will see he, how that plays out. Yeah, he, he says, no, uh, I'm not going to say a name. Uh, yeah. He says, when we spoke today, I felt like I gave you everything and you <laughs> gave me nothing. My yeah. intention was for you to give me something, but it's you made it clear that's not that's not possible. And Parvati's just like, it's difficult to take that at face value when my sense is that you don't trust me. And when no, it's like, no. Let, look, that's all I got. That's all I got. Uh, Yule, Yule is just like, uh, I, 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 this is like my, watching my parents bicker. Uh, this is not, this is not fun. Uh, Michelle says she feels like she's caught between two people she loves and she feels like she's going to hurt somebody. Um, and so the vote comes down three to two Parvati over Wendell. Um, and Parvati is going to bequeath her fire tokens to Michelle. Um, so, uh, interesting, interesting stat here about Parvati is that, uh, she's only been voted out twice now in her four times and, uh, both times she was voted out by Yule. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> he's I really only like played Yule. twice. <laughs> I've never seen Yule play before. I didn't even know who he was before though. Sorry guys, but I really like him. What a great guy, huh? I'm rooting for him secretly to win. Obviously Jeremy's my guy, you know, but if Jeremy didn't win and Yule did, I wouldn't be upset about it. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. So we head over to the call, um, and we hear from uh, we hear that uh, that Kim says that the theme this season is about threats versus non-threats. Sandra says the threats are Rob, Tyson, herself, Kim, Jeremy, Parvati, Tony, uh, and then you got non-threats like Nick, Michelle, or Denise. We all know it. Uh, Denise says, "Look, we're all threats for different reasons." Yeah. Um, and so Denise is trying to sell like, look, I'm just trying to do what I can. Uh, Jeremy says, I'm really nervous, Jeff. Normally, I'm like a duck. I look real smooth on top. But underneath, underneath, it's like <laughs> uh, right now, I'm like uh, an upside down duck. You can see my feet all going crazy because I'm losing my mind. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was dying. Great. I was dying. That was great. Yeah, no, I was getting into a fair analogy like. It really is, you know. He he is kind of cool and collected on the surface, you know, and he's probably internally like really anxious. But he he's he's the opposite of Tony. Yeah, you know. So <clears throat> that was a good one. That was a good moment. So we get to he, the vote. He had a lot of good moments in the show. He really does. He, lot, he, he really does. A lot of good moments this episode specifically. Um, we get to the vote, and Sandra votes out Denise, and she says, uh, "It's all for show." I'm certain yeah. you're not going home tonight. Yeah. Um, which was true. Uh, um, notably here, Jeremy does not leave. He feels yeah. comfortable enough <clears throat> that he does not use his safety without power. Great read from Jeremy. Um, yeah. yeah, it, absolutely. It, it takes some, it takes some gumption to, to do, to make a move like that. Yep. Um, especially on an all winter season when it's like, you don't want to look like a fool. Uh, right. <laughs> so uh, i think he, i think he knows though that if he's gonna win the game he, he's gonna need that later yeah so that's i think it's the way a lot of i think i hope i would hope that's the way i would look at it it's like listen yeah this could keep me an extra week and a lot can happen just by being an extra day you know and it's, i'm thinking big brother terms but this will keep me around a little bit longer and things can change at that point but 
if you really want to win, you want to stack up your advantages and really hit people in the mouth with them later. So you're right. It takes a lot of gumption, takes a lot of good intuition. And uh, I was ha- I was glad to see him keep that for another tribal because it could come in really handy in a position where he knows he's going home, you know? Yeah. So uh, Denise says before Jeff reads, though, she says, uh, Jeff, can you give me a minute? Yeah. I, uh, I found something along the way today. Yeah. I want to I want to check in here. Uh, Jeremy looks nervous about this because if the old Decal are playing this right, then they split the vote between Jeremy and uh, and Denise, and he is gone if she's playing this idol. Yeah, I and think so th- I think he thought that's what was about to go down. He's nervous. Kim looks a little nervous, but again, it's hard to get a read there. Yeah. Um, then Denise says uh, again, hey, Jeff, can you give me one more minute? Uh, she goes up she plays one for jeremy now he looks very happy now he looks yeah, very pleased yeah, um notably notably kim also smiling during the second idol play laughing with them um and again this is insane from kim when denise plays the idol on herself and on jeremy she's one of three people that can go home And she knows that it's basically Denise's decision. And she has a good enough read on what Denise is going to do that she holds on to her idol. That's insane to me. Like, that is that is an absurd level of of gumption there. Yeah. 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 Again, it goes back to what I just said. People who've won, they know what it takes to win. They know that they're there to win, not to come in, you know, fourth place or fifth place. They want to win. And I think these advantages, if you can stack them up and hold on to them in a bind when they really could c- come in handy, that she's going to have it, hopefully. And that's what she's hoping on, you know. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Played a great game so far. She's really – she's a front runner for sure, in my opinion. At this point, she's played a great great game so far and um, showed her that she can come through some adversities. So it'll be interesting to see how she makes out. But, again, take some uh, some big ones. To keep yeah. that idol in your pocket when you know you could save yourself right there. So Jeff is reading the votes. Sandra's smiling as the votes are read. The final vote comes out. And I still think it's Tony at this point. Uh, Jeff reads Sandra. I literally yelled, oh my God, they just did it to Sandra. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and Sandra, you can like, you, you, they cut to Sandra and it literally takes like a couple of seconds for it to even just register. To like register she's just what like. Just happened. Yeah. Yeah, she got played. Um she got yeah. played. and and even everybody was just kind of like, "Wow, what a move by Denise. She was sitting here slow playing us to sleep and just slit Sandra's throat in front of us." Like Kim, Kim goes, "Oh my god." And then Tony's like, "How how how is that possible, man?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was an incredible play by Denise and again, someone else I've never seen play before didn't really have high expectations for to be honest to pull something like that off when she said i found something along the way i was like oh she's protecting sandra for now she'll get her later but she didn't she didn't even after they had already put their votes out there she could have just said by the way sandra gave this to me but she probably didn't want to do that because someone else could have played an idol even possibly sandra if she had if she had a second one so no it was uh, an incredible move i will say It was an almost perfect move, in my opinion. I would have done the same thing as her because she probably thought they were going to split the votes between her or Jeremy in Mm -hmm. case one of them had an idol. So you, if you're going to make the move, you need it to work. And in order to make sure you get your target out, you have to play the idol on Jeremy because if you play just on you and they have one vote on Jeremy, now it's a tie and you're going to rocks and it's all messy and you may walk away with nothing out of the deal the person you want out may still be there so she has to do it but for it to have been perfect she would have kept that idol in her pocket had the intuition to know they were all going to vote for her which is impossible i know and just said oh you guys are all going to vote for me i know it and i'm gonna send home one of your allies but yeah it it was exactly the way i think 99.9 percent of the people in this world would have done it if they had that level of thought and just an incredible, mo- probably going to be the most, again, I don't know what we're going to see. The season's been great so far, but this could possibly be the greatest moment of the season as far as the level of gameplay that went into this and the psychology behind it. But you never know. It is like the, I think is the, the probably the best season they've ever had. I mean, they have the best players of all time there. Yeah. 
but yeah, as a as a newer watcher, you know, since Tony season, I've been watching. Uh, first season, incredible, incredible move. I was sitting there going, that really just happened. Okay, no Kim, Kim says she's so impressed. Denise yeah. is like, I want to throw up. Uh, yeah. Sandra said, Day sixteen got me again. Yeah, um, kudos to Sandra too to just like just legend status. Like, you know, you got me. She respected it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. she was like, you, she, I got got. You know, she Jeff didn't go has- out bitter. Yeah, Jeff has a great uh, quote at the end of this. He says, no matter how you categorize each other as threats, it only takes one move to become a high-profile player. He knew it. Welcome knew to it. the club. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Jeff, man, another – I mean, just, you know, I know people have their opinions about Jeff, but he's he's perfect for that show. Yeah. Sandra bequeaths her tokens to – I hate that uh, word, too. It's like the worst word it ever. Is. She bequeaths to Yule, to Yule, uh, which was yeah. an interesting choice. Um, yeah. So – what I really want to dig down in on this decision here, this move from Denise and the move from Sandra. So how it's portrayed on the show, it, it appears as though um, Sandra is petitioning Denise to vote out Tony. Um, yeah. She's giving the idol to get Tony out of the game. And so that raises a lot of questions. Like, why is she giving an idol to, to Denise instead of just voting for tony um because again it's not like you'll be able to keep the secret you're giving up your own safety it doesn't make a lot of sense um and then why is denise voting sandra out instead of tony um now certainly one of the factors is something that uh um something that was brought up by steven on the know-it-alls which is that as soon as sandra agrees to the one token now one later she's you know incentivizing why? denise to betray her yeah um which is definitely a part of it yeah but also say, yeah. but also because sandra proposed this move you kind of have a little bit of incentive to go along with it you're building a relationship with sandra by doing what she wants and you now have dirt on her um you can essentially out her to um to kim and say well actually she is the one that gave me that idol to, idol to take out tony and potentially cause a rift between Sandra and Kim. Um, yeah. And so I actually wasn't sure I agreed with Denise's ultimate decision to take Sandra out of the game instead of just going along <clears throat> and taking out Tony, even though Sandra was the flashier move. However, yeah. we in digging into the secret scenes and what Sandra has said outside, uh, she had a video on the Survivor Twitter page that um, this move was actually a little bit different than it was portrayed on the show. And I actually think it makes considerably less sense for sandra and it's a lot more impressive from denise um so basically when sandra says you can choose either of the two boys what she really meant was eventually she tells denise she wants jeremy out not tony she's trying to convince denise to use the idol and then vote jeremy out of the game And she says, so this is what she says in in this Twitter video. You can find it on Survivor CBS on Twitter. Um, She says that uh, her strategy was to get, her initial strategy was to come on the show was to get rid of the females because she didn't want there to be another queen. But she was worried about Denise leaving because she says she was jealous of her, of Jeremy's relationship with Tony. Um, And so she really wanted Jeremy gone so that Tony didn't have Jeremy anymore. Mm -hmm. So she said, never did I think Denise already had an idol with the way she was acting. Uh, She played me. Uh, My greed for fire tokens consumed me. And so uh, she didn't even need saving. She got me. She played me. I did it to myself. So basically, Sandra was proposing to Denise, take out Jeremy. Take out your ally. I'll give you this idol in order to do it. And to me, that makes the move even worse because yeah. there's no way Denise is going to use this idol, now have power to choose who goes home, and she's going to choose her only ally in the tribe yeah. to send home. Yeah. And now, because if she doesn't do what Sandra wants by taking out Jeremy, and she's pissing Sandra off, and she gets to keep a fire token if she gets rid of Sandra, now it makes a whole lot more sense why she turns it around on Sandra. Again, severely uh, incentivizing Denise to take out Sandra and not anybody else by telling her to take out Jeremy and not somebody like Tony. Um, and so I re- it really just gets to the point where it's like, and she, she describes it herself. She got 
kind of caught up in her greed for fire tokens. She got caught up in her jealousy over Tony and Jeremy's relationship, and she thought that she could just get away with something like this, but she's playing with savvy players who are going to, if you make a mistake like that, they're going to catch you on it and they're going to send you out. And that's what happened here. And like I said, I feel like this makes the move so much more defensible from Denise's standpoint, because it makes sense why she went after Sandra. And it also makes sense why she used the, the, the idol on Jeremy, because she's assuming that they're gonna go there's, after him. there's gonna be votes on Jeremy because yeah. that's what Sandra yeah. wants to do. She wants to send makes Jeremy sense. home. Makes and it, it only makes sense for Sandra to cast a vote on Jeremy or something along those lines right. in, in case Denise wants to do something like betray her and send her home. Uh, but she didn't even think to do that. Uh, but I cannot blame Denise for putting the, uh, the, the idol on Jeremy because that's what Sandra should have done. Um, yeah. And so she kind of overestimated Sandra in that moment by playing yeah. the idol there on Jeremy. Uh, yeah. So this is a really, really interesting move. Um, and it, it definitely was a very bad move from Sandra. Um, mm -hmm. I, I asked this question on Twitter. So th there have been a couple of big, really bad moves from winners of the game. Uh, two of the other ones happened on Heroes versus Villains. Uh, the one in particular that this is going to get compared to is um, JT gave an idol to uh, Russell Hans um, on the Villains tribe because it was Heroes versus Villains. JT was on the Hero tribe. Russell was on the Villains Tribe. Nobody knew who Russell was at this point. He was new to the game. He just played a season before. They never got to see his season. JT saw that on the Villains Tribe, all the guys were going home. And so he thought, there must be an all-women's alliance, just like in Parvati's first season, because Parvati was on that tribe. So if I send an idol to Russell, then he can use it to save himself. And when the merge comes, he'll come to us and we'll have the numbers, because it was a very even game at that point. The problem was Russell was actually one of the leaders of that alliance. Um, and so when he got that idol, him and Parvati ended up using it to essentially send JT home. Uh, mm -hmm. Really bad move from JT, an all time blunder, now being compared to this move by <laughs> Sandra. But I think when you compare them, I don't think it's even that comparable because I think that JT had a pretty decent reason. If JT is right, then he gains a lot. But there was nothing to gain here from Sandra. Uh, not only was there nothing to gain, but the method of doing it almost could never work. Again, Denise is never voting out Jeremy with this idol. I don't know why she thought that was possible. Um, and so it's, it's, it seems to me like the definition of an unforced error here. It's, and it was a massive one. Yeah, I mean, Sandra it seems like a very honest person. Like she just calls it how she sees it, even in the game, outside of the game. And I think she she nailed it where it was like, I didn't need the idol or I think I didn't think I needed the idol. I didn't want it to go to waste and I was greedy. I wanted fire tokens because none of us knew how valuable these tokens were going to be in the end. And I didn't want to be, uh, you know, sitting there with, you know, the least amount of fire tokens while everyone's getting all these advantages because I didn't I didn't collect them early in the game. So she was like, hey, I can kill two birds with one stone. I can use the idol and trade it for some fire tokens. I don't think, I think she thought that Denise was just there for the ride and she wasn't really maybe trying to win. She was trying to survive that week and uh, it came back to bite her. It really did. It came back to bite her and um, it just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how great of a player you are. We all make mistakes and in the moment, whether she wasn't thinking clearly, maybe her head wasn't in the game for some other reason. She was thinking about home or whatever. Or she was hungry, whatever it may be. We may never know. But she had a she had a mistake, and when you've played the game as many times as Sandra has played it, to think that that's the one big blunder she's had, you know, it, yeah, it cost her the game. But I think it's still I think she's still one of the best to play from what I've seen, and uh, you know, I think I think, in my opinion, Denise gained more prestige from this move than Sandra lost as far as her leg legacy is concerned. That's what I think. You know, it's, it does a, it's take a good a, prediction. We'll have yeah. to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, we will. <laughs> yes. So uh, there was another secret scene with Sandra that I think also helps illuminate the uh, overall mentality here. Uh, it's about Jeremy's meat shield strategy. And it's Jeremy talking to Sandra. He calls her boss lady. Um, he says, uh, how does the Rob vote affect you? Um, and she says, look, I don't play like you guys play. 
I don't use meat shields. Uh, I, I don't think that one person hanging around prolongs my life in the game. Uh, and Jeremy's like, I, I think you're wrong about this. I think that you need big targets around. You're a big name. You're a big threat in this game. I know you're not, I know that like I'm big physically and, and you're not that way, but just because you're not big physically doesn't mean that you're not a big target in the game. Right. And she says, no, I don't need a meat shield. I never have, I never will. I just don't play like that. Jeremy, yeah. he can go to extinction and it won't matter to me. Um, and I thought that this was like, this is interesting to hear from Sandra because the two times that she won the game, she won largely because she had a big meat shield in front of her the whole time, right? Johnny Fairplay and Russell Hance. Yep. Uh, and then the two times that she lost, she got those people voted out. She tried to get Johnny Fairplay voted out many times, never succeeded. She won the game. She tried to get Russell Hance out many times, never succeeded, won the game. Then she plays two more times and she succeeds largely or tries to uh, get her meat shields voted out um, and it doesn't work for her. And so I kind of feel like I don't know if she is entirely on top of what is most successful for her in the game. Yeah, I mean, you kind of unpacked a lot there. And it's one of those things where you know the game a lot deeper than me. You've seen past seasons. But again, going back to Rob, teaching an old dog new tricks, right? Being able to adapt, being able to see your surroundings and not say, I'm going to try to fit this square peg into a round hole. I'm going to become a round, a round peg. You know, she's, she's stuck in her ways. It's worked for her successfully two times. And she figured, hey, listen, if I'm going to win... This is my be this is the best way for me to win because this is all I know. And you know, it didn't work out for her this time, but you know, I think if if she played two or three more times, she'd probably win again. <laughs> At least one of those three times. It's just her her strategy is like she's probably the most un uh what's the word I'm looking for? non threatening person you're gonna see. She volunteers to not play every single freaking competition. But she has a way with her words and she has an intuition, usually that helps her get to the end. Unfortunately, in this case, her intuition was off and it, it, it could have just been a mistake and got one of her allies evicted. But instead, this person came right for her and said, I'm going to make sure you never forget this move. And kudos to Denise, man. Rockstar. Rockstar move. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because like the position that she plays from is different. Once she wins the second time, she's now playing from a position of power, which she never really had before. Yeah. Um, and that changes the way that you play. And it seems as though it's that she is not as well suited to that style of play as she right. was previously when she's making these kinds of decisions. And now that she has the power to make moves, she is making mistakes like the one that we saw her make here. Um, so obviously there's still a lot of stuff and that has plenty has been said about why Sandra is effective in the game. Um, but I think that what this episode and what the secret scene in particular uh, can help illustrate is some of the flaws in Sandra's game, which I think are really interesting. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's going on there. Uh, we also got a scene with Rob arriving at Extinction. He says that uh, he had been optimistic going into Tribal, but he knows he had a big target on his back. He, he tells us he's still winning the game. Right now, he's just taking a vacation to see his friends and his wife. Um, <laughs> Amber says that she should be, feel mad that, uh, that Rob is out, but she's actually really happy to see him. Um, Rob also says he feels Adam is a really smart player. Um, he says that Adam was like really trying to play hard. Adam got him out, and he seems like he's giving a lot of credit to Adam uh, for doing that, um, which I thought was interesting because I didn't really get that vibe from the episodes. Yeah, um, yeah. could be what we're not seeing, you know? Yeah, and uh, he tells them that he gave his fire tokens to Parvati, which is obviously one of the reasons why uh, Tyson is going to sell to Parvati because he knows she has those tokens. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, other than that, not much. Uh, Decal is eating well. Sandra was worried about it being day 16 before the immunity challenge even happened. She was like, day 16, this is, this, this is when I went out last time. Um, really hoping I get through. Uh, Adam says if they go to tribal, he'll be in some serious danger. He needs to make it to the merge and somehow turn things around if he wants to survive in the game. Um, and then uh, we hear from Jeff, like I said. Uh, Jeff said Wendell really feeling himself on that tribe. Um, Jeff also thought that Parvati should have taken Wendell's deal. He said he was surprised that she didn't. Uh, and I thought this was a misread by, by Jeff. I feel like, I uh, again, that was almost insulting that, uh, that yep, he even I offered. Agree. Um, I agree. 
Yeah. So that's just because uh, you're a good host doesn't make you a good player. You know, yeah. Jeff knows the game, but you know, he hasn't played before. And I think he'd be the first to admit that. Yeah. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to bring up from the episode before we get to the legacy? No, watch? I'm, I'm, I have 5% left on my laptop, so I'm just trying to make it through. Okay. <laughs> Let's get to the legacy watch then here. Um, so this is where we were at previously. You can see if you're watching the video, um, okay. but okay. I will, uh, I will, you know, talk us through as we change things up here. A lot of changes to the legacy watch this week. Um, not all in expected ways here. Um, so, up here in first place, we had Parvati. Um, now, we've seen here when people lose the game, their legacy tends to take a bit of a hit. Um, I don't think Parvati had a bad episode here, though. I thought she she displayed some strength, and that uh, even though she got voted out, um, it wasn't like there was much that she could have done. And unlike Boston Rob, and certainly unlike Sandra, um, there wasn't like a big mistake that she seemingly made that got her in this position. She swapped really bad and there was nothing she could do and she did her best to try to get out of it. <clears throat> Agreed. Yes, yeah, so she did drop a little bit, but she is still solidly in first place here in the legend tier. Uh, not a big drop here for Parvati. Um, after Parvati is Boston Rob, who is going to uh, surpass Sandra. Uh, not because he moved. He actually stayed exactly the same. Um, but Sandra did fall. She yeah. just did fall from that. Uh, Sandra with uh, a decent fall here. Not su not super big, but she does does fall to third place. Um, and this is where she started. So it's actually not terrible. No. Um, what I thought was interesting, though, is that um, at the start of the season, Kim... Again, started on a tribe where she was basically on the outs immediately because of something that was kind of out of her, out of her control. Um, she dropped significantly. She started in the legend tier, and she fell heavily into the top tier and has not made it back. Um, Sandra makes a terrible move, um, doesn't fall nearly as much as Kim did. Um, so I think that we're definitely seeing a bit of the, like, Sandra has more, you know notches on her belt than uh yeah. than parvati and she than has a Kim. bigger body of work she has a yeah. bigger body of work you know she has more seasons where people can evaluate over a period of time what she's done where kim she had a you know let's say she had a, a 10 out of 10 on the last one this one she, uh, to start she was like a three out of 10 and so it's kind of averaged in the middle whereas you know you're averaging uh I'm, i forgot her name right now i just told you sandra's play over what four or five seasons so it's you know bigger averages to work with but i do think there's some bias there you know she the, the people obviously love sandra and you know yeah i don't think this one move should define her though i, I do agree with that um so just to to reset this for the the chat who's asking this is uh, i poll the audience every week this is entirely based on what the audience thinks um and like i said i i pretty much i, I disagree pretty heavily with a lot of these uh, choices and I'll, I'll talk about them when they come up like i said i think that parvati should definitely be up there i really feel like she uh, even in her boot episode cemented her spot um i think uh boston rob did have a rough go of it here i do think that uh he was a little bit inflexible but i think that his gameplay is often very successful and so there's not all often a big reason to change that gameplay so i don't i don't mind him being up there i do think that sandra deserves a bit of a fall here this was a really bad move um and you know again connecting to her previous games uh i, I do think there are some big holes um in in what she does uh but Again, you can't argue with her effectiveness at times, so uh, I, I can't uh, I can't argue too much here. Yule, who has jumped into the legend tier throughout the season, st stays in the legend tier. Um, in fact, his score from last week was better than Sandra's score this week. So uh, Yule has a chance in this one, in this Legacy Watch, to overtake Sandra. Um, but he did fall in this episode, which keeps him behind Sandra. Uh, I think that not having much uh, airtime here uh, hurt him. And he got a big jump from last week after uh, the big moment with the ALS. Because um, again, this is not even necessarily about gameplay to some people. It's just about who they see and who they feel good about. So um, we've, got, uh, we've got Yule here in the uh in the bottom of the legend tier but still there in the legend tier and i think he deserved i think you'll really might cement himself in the uh in the legend tier uh can you can you hear me derek 
Okay, I, I can't hear you. You might have to switch uh, switch your microphone up. Um, so uh, so there you go. Uh, after after Yule, we go to the top tier, um, and in the top tier, in the top tier, uh, st still can't hear. You. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry, I had to switch over, so the quality is going to change a little bit. But it's cool. Um, all right, we, we, it's, um, we got Yule up there in the legend tier. After that, we are into the top tier. Tony has been pretty consistently at the top of the top tier. Uh, Taryn, can I ask you a question? Yes. Why only four in the legend tier? Is it based on a numerical system? Why is it not? Why is there like seven in the top tier and only four in the legend tier? It's so it's, yeah, it's based on, so I, I, there are four tiers. I just kind of arbitrarily picked four. Uh, I could have done five. I asked people if they wanted five. They preferred four. Um, and then uh, they, uh, on the survey, each player, you choose legend, top, middle, or bottom. And then yeah. I take the average, the weighted average of that. So each each one of those is scored by, uh, by a certain number. And then it takes the weighted average of that number. And then there are windows for each tier uh, that the average falls in between. Gotcha. Okay, say no more. So that's why I, I know that Parvati fell because her average fell, but she's still in the window for top tier and still above somebody like Rob. I have five or six in the top legend tier based on where their scores for. Yes. Wait, I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. So all right. So uh, y your audio is coming in and out a little bit, um, but uh, I think I think we'll be all right. Um, okay. So uh, so here we have. Here we have uh, Emmy in the chat says, "All I'm hearing is math, math, math." Yeah, sorry, sorry to bore you with the details. Um, in the top tier, Tony has been pretty consistently there, but there has been a change. There has been a change. Um, we're gonna see Denise jump from the middle tier all the way to the top of the top tier with this move. A big jump by far the biggest jump all season long um a uh, very big very big jump from denise she actually comes kind of close to the legend tier but not quite she's not there um and since this is likely to be her high point in the game she's probably not going to make it there unless she continues to do well but i think that's kind of fair um and i do think that denise absolutely should be in the top tier i really do i put her in the top tier to start the season um i thought she deserved top tier before the season even started uh and then the audience was like nah she's middle tier um but after this move the audience thinks oh yeah she's top tier and she is at the top of the top tier can you um, hear me yes I, I completely agree with their assessment. And if she continues to play this way, she's definitely going to be in a legend tier. But this might be a move that, I don't know if everything from there might be downhill. It was so, <laughs> it was so good. It's very true. Um, after Denise, we do have Tony still there. He did fall a little bit. Um, I think his spy bunker shenanigans, uh, people were like, eh. Uh, but he's still up there pretty high. Um, after Tony, still Kim. Kim up there toward the top of the top tier. She actually did still fall a little bit in this episode. For me, this episode would have pushed Kim. I really feel like Kim should be back up there in the legend tier. I really do. I think that she's done really well so far this season. Unless she massively screws up, uh, I really feel like uh, she's just so solid um, in this game. But, uh, but she's still hanging out here in the top tier. Um, after Kim... We saw, this is a really strange one, we saw Tyson jump big over uh, Sarah, Sophie, and Jeremy to land behind Kim. Um, I love Tyson. I've made this clear. I thought his peanut butter scene was hilarious. I, I've made that clear as well. This is a weird jump for Tyson. But I think it comes down to, again, people like watching some players... Can you hear me all right? I see you playing with your pieces. No, yes, yes. Um, but no, I mean, it's one of those things where it's not all about gameplay. Some people just want to have some levity in the show. And when you have a guy sitting there with a seashell scooping peanut butter, talking about the value of this peanut butter, I just think that people, that's a, that's a memorable scene. I think in this episode, I think about Denise's move 
and I think about Tyson with the peanut butter. Honestly, I'm just being – so when they're filling out your surveys after watching, I think that plays into it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like people people get mad every single week uh, about about this sometimes. But, but again, I, I feel like the point of this is to measure – something that's already happening like this happens like this is happening in the audience but it's not being measured i want to measure it i want to see how ridiculous this can be sometimes uh and like i said i feel like for a player like michelle who really uh really wants to prove herself um hopefully something like this proves to her how ridiculous and arbitrary these kinds of opinions can be uh the fact that tyson gets some peanut butter and now people think he's better than jeremy all of a sudden like it's it's ridiculous. The thing about this legend system is you and I are basing it on gameplay, right? Where sometimes you can be a legend and actually not be a great player. You know, there are people, and I just I go back to Big Brother because I know Big Brother. I think I, I'd like to think pretty well. Yeah. There are players that are very memorable in Big Brother who haven't won before. You know, it's just one of those things where, you know, for purists like you and I, we want strategy. We want social play. You know, we want all that. But for the viewers and the people who are watching, sometimes they just want to be entertained. And Tyson is someone that I think of when I think of like the prototypical player for Survivor, the beach, beachy long hair, and the, he's just perfect for it. And I think in a, in a very anxious, you know, uptight game, he brings some levity to it where you escape that seriousness for a couple minutes and you get a funny scene about peanut butter that we were talking about for 15 minutes at the beginning. <laughs> so clearly, and I think it's authentic, uh, authentic, authentic to who he is. Like I've never met him, but it sounds like he, that's who he is outside the, the, the show. And I think that comes through and, you know, again, I would rather see it just based purely on gameplay. And I think if it was, this list would be different, but yeah. there's other elements to it. Yeah, and and you know what we will do, of course, uh, after like so we're I'm giving this data to uh, Christina, who does a lot of data analysis for us uh, on the Big Brother stuff. She's gonna uh, probably like chart thing chart this out so you can map where people uh, thought people were based on the episode so that should be fun at the end of the season we'll do uh one final one we'll probably check in again later on um i i will uh probably get some guests together we'll we'll do uh our version of it and how that compares to uh, the audiences so i think there's still a lot of uh fun things we can do here uh even though sometimes people complain in the chat because they disagree with uh the the will of the people <laughs> people complaining i don't <laughs> i yeah. Uh, so after Tyson is Jeremy, uh, who actually he fell a little bit here. Uh, I don't think he should have. I think Jeremy should have risen from this episode, but he fell a little bit. Um, we saw after Jeremy is going to be Sophie, who's going to jump over Sarah. Um, Sophie did fall just a little bit, not being in the episode, but Sarah actually fell even more. Um, Sarah had a, a decent fall from uh, from where she was before. No idea why. No, no idea why Sarah takes a hit in this episode. Uh, like, neither Sarah or Sophie are in this episode, but Sarah takes, a, a, a like, twice as much of a hit as Sophie does. Um, Sophie maybe just has a bigger, like, fan base, so less, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, subject to individual sways from the episodes, maybe? Yeah, it's definitely part of, part of it, the social media following, etc., and... Who's more active? It doesn't seem like Sarah is too active on social media. Mm -hmm. oh. um, yeah. Uh, then we're going to see that uh, Natalie, who started in the top tier, then when she was the first one out, fell to the middle tier, then got some good content on Extinction, rose back up to the top tier, has now fallen once again to the middle tier. Um, she's really flirting with that line. Um, she was not really in this episode. It seems like Tyson has kind of overtaken her as the star of Extinction Island. And I, I, I think that's harming her score here. She has fallen uh, somewhat significantly back down into the middle tier, but she's still at the top of the middle tier. My prediction, <clears throat> my prediction is that she's probably gonna be the winner of uh, Extinction Island. There might even be two. And if she is, I think she skyrockets. I really do. I think she's a really underrated player. Uh, and and she was voted out first. I mean, she, she's, I would think, the most physically fit out of anyone on the show. She's extremely intelligent. And I think that when it's all said and done, 
I think she comes back and I think she ends up in either top of the top tier or maybe even legend tier. I honestly think that. I don't think she'll get legend because her body of work, but she's only played one other time, right? And she yeah. Won. So if she's able to get into like, if she gets back from Extinction Island, that's object number one, and then she's able to finish in the top three, I mean, two times playing and you and you were voted out early the first one, I think uh, she deserves it. But keep an eye on her because I think where she is right now, she won't end up there if she's able to get back from Extinction Island, which based on who's there right now, nothing against them. If it's physical and even a little bit mental, she's going to I think she'll smoke them. Yeah, I, I personally I think that she is close enough. She's again flirting with that line enough. I think even if she doesn't come back, she will land, she will gravitate back toward the top tier. Um, what we what we see happen a lot is that uh, there's a big initial reaction. And then it slowly kind of gravitates back toward normal. Um, uh, kind of like our stock market, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so that's where she is. After Natalie is actually going to be Ethan, who's going to jump over both Wendell and Michelle. Um, not because he moved this week, but because they both fell. Um, that's not surprising. Yes. Uh, so Michelle fell by a somewhat decent margin and wendell fell by double that margin um so they both fell uh but uh but they're both still in the middle tier here above uh above some others um and uh interestingly wendell started above michelle i believe he started in the top tier and he has been consistently dropping ever since um this has not been a good season for him no, no, we had, we talked about it. We don't have to keep going because we both like Wendell. Yeah. Uh, not getting a good edit if it's an edit. And he, and as you mentioned, uh, he's giving them a lot of sound bites to edit if that is the case. So different approach. Um, but if he ends up winning the game, I think some people may rewatch the season and go, wow, he had this all planned. But, you know, I think most people are, are reacting to the fact that they don't think this is a strategy. And this is just like, a different side of Wendell that they hadn't seen in the past and they don't like it. Clearly your day, your data is showing they don't like this Wendell, you know, mm -hmm. they want building furniture, Wendell. Yeah. Uh, I also, th I thought it was interesting that Michelle also fell here last week. She, uh, she rose a little bit, um, that, uh, yeah, she rose a significant amount last week. It looks like she lost a decent amount of those gains. Um, I think losing, uh, poverty, hurts her i think that um the fact that she continues to be in this sort of negative uh sort of like relationship drama i think might be hurting her as well um wendell certainly getting the worst end of it but the fact that she's involved at all is also still hurting her a little bit let me ask you something because you're dealing with this all the time and it could be just me looking at it but if wendell last episode or the episode before that had told everyone at tribal to empty their bags, mm -hmm. the idols. Do you think that would have affected him? In the, in the legacy watch or in the game? In the, in the legacy watch because the reaction to it, because I make that point because you have Rob sitting at number two right now mm -hmm. has a very, he has like, he's confident. That dude's confident and he'll tell you, I mean, he literally went to tribal and was like, run your pockets, everyone run your pockets. And I think some people would say, oh, if that was Wendell, who's he think he is? But Rob does it. And it's like, dude, Rob's a beast. You know, and it's just what I'm the point I'm making is I actually thought it was a really cool move by Rob. But what the point I'm making is there is that bias and there is that preconceived notion about who you're supposed to be as a player. Mm. People expect that type of behavior from Rob. That's that's Boston Rob. Where Wendell, we've only seen him one season and he was the kind of like the nice jovial, like, you know, good guy that everyone kind of rooted for. And now he's showing a different side to him. And that's like, they're like, no, that's not what we expect from Rob. Uh, we want Rob. I mean, that's not what we expect from Wendell. We want Wendell to be the guy who is nice to everyone and everyone likes and you know, all these things. So I, it's interesting to see these typecasts that we get put in by, by the fans. And when you go outside of that, um, it can affect you one way or the other. Um, and in this case, it's affecting Wendell negatively. Yeah, it's definitely interesting, you know, thinking about like Tony, too, where uh, like I, I think it also has to do with the fact that like somebody like Tony found success being crazy Tony 
with okay. spy shacks and stuff. And so when he has a spy bunker and it, it turns out poorly for him, he actually doesn't take much of a hit. Uh, it was He did take a little bit of a hit, but not yeah. much of one because that's what we expected. And he's found success previously doing something like that. Uh, Maybe and Tony, right? Exactly. And it's Rob being Rob and Sandra being Sandra. And they're all being what they're expected to be. Even Tyson, you know, that's something Tyson would do. Do you remember the melons with him that one season? <laughs> the coconut <laughs> bandits, yeah. So this is this is their character. And what we're seeing from Wendell is like a reaction to like, who is this guy? We don't, mm. we don't know this guy. This isn't the Wendell we know when in reality, no one knows who Wendell is except his friends and family. You know what I mean? Like we're just seeing him on the show. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. It really is interesting. Who is the real Wendell? And I think as the season progresses, we'll see if this this continues or this is just because he doesn't love the fact that he's got his ex-girlfriend with him and it's making him more prote- feel more uh, apprehensive about trusting people. Who knows? We'll see. We will see. Uh, so after Wendell, at, toward the bottom of the middle tier, we're actually going to see Nick, who has flirted the line between bottom and middle tier. He's actually going to take a bit of a jump and he's going to go over Adam, um, Nick, Good. I yeah, Nick, Nick gains a little bit here and Adam falls, uh, an equal amount, uh, just a little bit. Um, and that is going to place Nick right above Adam in the middle tier. I think that's an accurate assessment. I think it's really spot on. Those two are very similar in a lot of ways, as far as the, you know, their legacy and where they rank as far amongst these other players. And I think that's an accurate, uh, ang- uh, portrayal of where we are right now. Adam is playing scared. He's just trying to survive. And Nick is playing the game to try to win right now. Um, like we had said earlier, Adam took a shot in the mouth and he, he he didn't like it. So he's he's kind of taking a step back and just hoping for a change up in tribe so that he can maybe try to play again. But right now he's just he's in survival mode and Nick is in a pretty good position with his alliance members, his read on the remaining players in his tribe. So I think it would be inaccurate to have Adam above Nick at this point. Yeah, I, I think that Adam still has a lot of game left to be played in him, though. I really, even though he's low here, I really feel like he's going to end the season in a much higher spot. He made a mistake. There's no doubt about it. But I, I think, I think Adam is in a top tier, uh, a top tier player. Um, you know, he's not middle tier as far as the best players. That kid knows the game as good, if not better, than most of these people probably st- in this, you know, category here. He's a super fan. I mean, he said it on one of the episodes. It was, you know people have different ambitions in life. They want to go do things. His, his ultimate goal in life was to play survivor and win. Like that's his life goal. So that he lives, breathes and the other term, I won't say this game. And uh, he's going to be in the top tier by the end of it, because if he's as good as I think he is, he's going to reevaluate how he had been playing. He's, he's readjusting right now. And he's going to come back either his original version or a new version that'll be more suitable for this style of gameplay. Yeah. Uh, so then we get to the bottom tier, and that's going to stay the same. Ben stays exactly the same. Uh, Amber moves up a little bit, and Danny's going to stay exactly the same. Now, last week, Amber had actually fallen below Danny. Um, I speculated that with Rob's fall, Amber actually took a bit of that heat as well just by being married to him. Um, but over the course of the week, when that kind of faded a little bit, she actually did come back and surpass Danny once again. So she finished above Danny and then is now going to stay above Danny as well. Um, and so the bottom tier here is going to stay very much the same. I was actually uh, interested to see that Ben did not rise at all this episode. Because um, like I said, I felt like he got some really strong content at the start of the episode where his storyline with Boston Rob came full circle. Um, but uh, but the audience, I guess, did not uh, see the same thing that I did. Yeah, I think with Ben, it's kind of the, the opposite of what we have going on with Parvati, Rob, and Sam. Mm-hmm. It, like, it's going to take a lot more to knock Rob, Parvati, and Sandra down and it's going to take a lot more for Ben to be pushed up because I know there were really strong reactions to him being on the season this year over some other past winners. Um, and I think he really has to prove himself even more so than a lot of these other players. And he also got a really bad edit the first couple episodes where they made him look like a fish out of water. Like he was not supposed to be there and he was just like happy that they asked him, you know? So I think if he continues on the trend he's on right now, people will start to take notice but it's going to take more than one episode to move him up at the same way it would take more than one episode or more than one, you know, being voted off for it to take those top T people out. 
Yeah. So that's what we got with the Legacy Watch. Um, again, some interesting moves, some a little bit confusing moves at times. Um, but for me, this is always interesting. Um, and I know there have been some people that have reached out that have said uh, that this is uh, their favorite favorite part of the podcast. Um, and uh, and I, I again, I always look forward to, to looking at, uh, again, not, not because I agree with the rankings here, but just because I'm so intrigued at how each individual episode impacts how the audience is viewing the winners. Yeah, no, it's it's great and visually it's really great to see it in person and I love you guys do a great job. Yeah, no, this is really cool. And I could see as a fan, I am a fan, would would like to watch this. That's why I do watch it even when I'm not on. <laughs> well, thank you. Um so that's about what we have for you. And a, a crazy episode of Survivor. Um we have now lost I mean, if you look at that top tier. Parvati, Boston Rob, Sandra out one, two, three in a row. Um, and now it is all up to these other players to see can they uh, can they build their legacy up and surpass these three now that they're all out of the game. Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, no, it's, either way, it's been a great season. I can tell you uh, Survivor. I mean, I've, oh, I've liked Survivor since I played. I can tell you that I have been like – spoken to about survivor in the past as far as like would i ever play or would i want to play and my answer was always like definitively no i could never do it after watching this season it gives you the itch like you want to these guys make you want to play that's how good all of them are collectively like it makes someone like me who's like dead set i would never even attempt it to now being like oh my god this is this is what i this is a real all-star game like there's no there's these are all winners they all won and like to get all of them out there, kudos to CBS, kudos to the production crew, because this is not easy to do. And to have this many people who've won the show all on the same season, I mean, that's why it's getting the ratings it's getting. It's like, I haven't seen every season. I'm sure a lot of you, maybe even you, Taryn, would disagree, but best season I've ever seen by far. I mean, I think it's the the best cast we've ever seen on, on a reality show. I 100% agree. And I don't even, I don't think they could do this on Big Brother. I don't know. Could if, you imagine? Could you imagine an all winners, all winner Big Brother season? I I've always said I wouldn't play again. You know, I've I've nothing to prove. I, I will tell you right now, if I got a call tomorrow and they said it's all winners, we got everyone. I'm going. I'm going because this is this is such a motivation to say who's the best. Who's yeah. the best? You have two boxers, right? And they're from different eras. And they'll, those, these boxers will go and face other people in other bouts. And subjectively, you'll analyze their fights and say, oh, I think he would have, he would win if they went together. I think, well, here's an idea. Put him in the same ring and let's see who's standing at the end. Yeah. I mean, need I say, that's it. I mean, as a competitor, you want to get people to go back in and leave their family and stuff like that. That they have a chance to go against the people that they're constantly compared to. That's yeah. what they want. So yeah, no, this incredible job, incredible job by everyone involved. Yeah, you have you have the exact same mindset as me too. Like, I I I'm just loving getting to see all of these these players face off against each other. I would I would love to see an all winner Big Brother season. I f- I feel like on Big Brother the bigger targets uh, will. I think it's a little bit. Not easier, but I think that uh, it, there's more. There are more options for the bigger targets to survive a little bit longer than in survivor because um because of how specific the game works uh specifically the game works where like one player gets power and then chooses so you just have to convince one player to not target you as opposed to like in survivor you have to it's like it's much easier for the group consensus to just be like well they're the biggest target right um so i i feel like it would i feel like it could work on big brother but I think it could work too. I think um, I think you would have a situation, and I'll leave it up for you and your people to decide who that would be. But I think there would be a select group of individuals who have won that, just like the Rob and Parvati and Sandra of the show. I don't care who's in there; everyone is a fan of them, even though they're past winners. Oh you yeah. Know? So I think there's certain people like you know that are going to be in there. And again, I won't say names, but. There are people that are legends in Big Brother that'll go in there and regardless of how down they play or how in the background they are, you're going in there and if they're on the block or they're eligible for a nomination, you, you have to put them up because of the, the the feedback you'll get when you leave the house that you had the chance and you didn't. Or hypothetically, if 
if one of them are on the block and you don't send them home, you're, you're trash. So you gotta, you have to send them out. So I think there would be a few people that they could go in there and offer everyone gifts and they'd still be like, no, you're going home. Like if we don't win this game, the one thing we're going to do is get you out. And I think that's what, I think that's what Rob and Sandra and Parvi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they played a bad game. Sandra made a bad move. Rob didn't make any really serious moves. He just didn't adapt. Well, Parvati was kind of really didn't have a chance to do anything. And yet their names and their legacy is what really, did them in at the, in the end yeah i i think for sure one of you dan or uh or or will would just like get an unlucky roll and like be out early um it, just nothing you could do people those are the three people two people i'm compared to the most uh i think in if one of us don't win hoh the first week one of us is going yeah. home and i think yeah. uh once two of us are out out of the three then the other one would probably be safe for a while. That's exactly what I was thinking. One one of you has a shot. Yeah. The other two are going to get unlucky and uh, probably get sniped early. I don't blame it, and I don't blame it. But that said, if you were production, I'm saying it now, I will stick to it. You, can, you guys can crush me if I don't. If I get the call that those guys are in there, I'm going. I'm not the one you have to worry about. I'm going. I would 100% go, um, especially in the situation I'm in now where I'm filming You know, a couple months out of the year. That's it before I had a job to leave. Um, if that was the case and that was put in front of me, if this season of Survivor was in, made for, you know, created for Big Brother where they're like, hey, listen, we're bringing all the winners back. You ready to put your title on the line for your season? Book my ticket. Book my ticket. I just don't know if it'll happen. I don't yeah. know. But the problem, I'll say this to, to in defense to all the Big Brother players, this is including me, Doing a season of all winners for Big Brother with a lot different than Survivor. And I think that's something that the fans underestimate. This is 39 days, maybe 40. Mm -hmm. Big Brother's 100 days. It's a big difference. The, 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 The things you're going through while you're there really don't matter to us. Like you want to not feed me or whatever, that's fine. 40 days, it's over. When we get to the 40 day mark in Big Brother, we're not even halfway there. And survivor people are already breaking down crying on day 20 or 30 when they see their loved one. So you got to keep that in perspective. And that's not an excuse. I'm just saying it's a reality. Like everyone, just like these survivor players have family and friends and kids and, but it's 40 days, you know, you get to day 20, you're halfway through. We get to the end of their season and we're not even halfway yet. It's a big difference. I'd rather have a shorter season. That's super hard than a longer season. That's kind of a lot of, of dead time. And that's the biggest obstacle with Big Brother. I know that from talking to other winners and myself. That's my biggest hurdle is um, it would have to be hugely incentivized for me to go. And the biggest incentive would be you tell me that you got the other people. I cannot not go if they're there. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that's how some of these Survivor uh, players felt as well, um, who felt like they wouldn't play again, but felt like, well, I, I can't not do the all winter season. Yeah, if, if they're all there, you got it. You got to go. It's just that simple. Like if I get the call and, it, and if it ever happened, they said, hey, we're going to kind of copy Big Bro- uh, Survivor and, you know, all the winners are coming. They're all a go. Well, if you don't go, you have nothing but bad coming your way on social media. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. I'm enjoying this season. Regardless of what happens in the future, it's as a fan of reality games like this, I agree with you. This is the best cast we've ever had on any reality game show, and we probably will never see it again. So I hope everyone's enjoying it because this is this is probably a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's what we have for you this week. Um, thank you guys for joining us. You can find me on Twitter at Armstrong Taren. Derek, where can people find you? Uh, at Derek L on Twitter. And uh, at Derek Lavasser, common spelling on Lavasser, of course, um, on on Instagram. But I'm assuming if you're already on here, you're either following me or you have no uh, uh, ambition to follow me. So, (laughs) well, you also have a TV show. Yeah, Breaking Homicide. We just finished season two that just aired. We don't even know what's happening with season three because obviously there's there's production stuff, but more importantly, there's this little thing called coronavirus going around right now. That's basically shutting down everywhere, including Hollywood. So I don't know what happens, but uh, enjoying watching this and having some downtime to actually enjoy it. I'm growing out my Survivor beard. I'm not having much success. This is about as yet, but I'm really into it, Taryn. I'm really, I'm really embracing the Survivor mentality. 
All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining me here, Derek. Yeah, it was very fun talking with you. Always. Thank you to everybody who watched. I'm sorry we were on late. It's my fault, not Taryn's. I, I got the kids at home and I'm homeschooling them right now because of the virus. So good times. It's cra crazy times. Crazy times. Uh, but uh, we've got we've got an all winter season on. So uh, we can be thankful for that. Give us what we want. Just let us binge it. <laughs> Imagine if this came out and said, we're going to let you guys binge it, you know? But then it would be over too fast. Then we'd have nothing. I want to know, Taryn. I just want to know. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys again for joining us. I will be back next time uh, to talk about next week's episode of Survivor. Thank you again for joining us, and uh, I'll see you then. Later, guys.